evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, attendees and participants, and welcome to the May 10th uh, meeting of the City, Variance, City of Tampa Variance Review Board. To introduce uh, the VRB members from my left, the members of the board are Una Johnson, Sam Decker, Brett Feldman, and Aaron Murphy. Uh, also in attendance this evening, we have uh, from legal, Susan Johnson Velez, uh, from development coordination, Jane Madu, uh, from natural resources, uh, there he is in the back, Stephen Eister, and from transportation, Jonathan Scott. Um, there are some procedural rules we need to follow this evening. Um, when your case number and petitioner's name is called, please approach the podium. When you approach the podium, please state your name, your address, and if you have been sworn in. The petitioner and or their agent will have 10 minutes to make a presentation. All other persons or participants wishing to speak will have three minutes, and then the petitioner will have an additional five minutes uh, for rebuttal if needed. Um, the time periods as stated will be kept by the board. Any information such as pictures of plans that have not been previously submitted as part of your petition uh, and, and you intend to present at this hearing for consideration in support of your petition must be individually presented and accepted by the board. After acceptance by the board, you must submit the item to staff uh, for it to be entered and made part of the permanent record. Uh, the board bases its decision on competent and substantial evidence which is presented and which meets the criteria uh, required by the city's code of ordinances. Please be sure to clearly state your hardship criteria during your presentation. A majority of the board is needed to approve your variance. Um, there are some special uh, points that need to be made with this uh, point tonight. Because we only have four members of what is ordinarily a six to seven member board, uh, our rules allow that anyone who wishes to have uh, a continuance to when there are more than four members, um, you can do so and that continuance will be automatically granted. However, that request needs to be made before you make your presentation, before your case is presented. So if anyone uh, would like to have a continuance to when there are more than four members on the board, please approach um, city staff, let them know. We'll get that uh, request made and we'll get you continued to another night uh, when we have more than four members. But for now, we only have the four. You will need a majority, which means you need three of the four members to approve your petition this evening. Um, it's up to you as to whether you want to make that request. Uh, a variance granted by the board will be only for what is shown on the site plan and will be in compliance with any terms and conditions stated in the approval by the board. All other city codes will need to be met. If the case is approved, your variance will expire two years from the date of the decision. If the case is continued, it will be continued to either next month's VRB board agenda or the next available position on the upcoming VRB board agenda. If the case is denied, you may wish to have the variance review board's decision appealed by the city council. Um, to do so, you must file a petition for review of the board's decision within 14 days of the written decision. You will not be able to pull any permits until after the 14 days review period has passed. Uh, your cooperation in ensuring that this meeting runs smoothly is greatly appreciated. Uh, can I have a motion from uh, one of our board members to approve the meeting minutes from the April? Uh, meeting. So moved. And second. All right. All those in favor say aye. All right. The meeting minutes are approved. Thank you. At this time, I'll ask legal staff to confirm uh, whether there are any ex parte communications or conflicts. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Susan Johnson Velez, legal department uh, board members. At this time, I'd like um, to ask if any of you have had any written or verbal contact with anyone regarding any matter on the agenda this evening. Hearing none, I'd now like to ask if you have had, if you, you have any conflict of interest with respect to any matter on the agenda this evening. For the record, none have so indicated. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much. All right, uh, staff, do we have any changes to the agenda that you would like to address this evening, Ms. Madhu? No. Okay, uh, then at this time, I would like a staff member to conduct the swearing in. Uh, folks, if there is a chance even small chance that you might speak tonight, that you might present some evidence, that you might want to stand up and say, 
uh, I oppose this or I support this or here's a bit of information. If there's a chance you're going to speak, let's stand up and be sworn so that we can do that. All right, so uh, please stand and be sworn this evening. All right. I believe Lisa was able to get copies of the staff report to everybody. Did you get one? Yeah. We're missing one. One? Okay. Oh. All right. Um, I'll go slow <laughs> since you've not had time to review this. Um, but I mean, it's an old um, case, so some of the particulars of the case may be familiar to you. Um, this is VRB 21136. It is addressed at 426 South Oregon Avenue. This is zoned RM12. It's a residential multifamily. And um, the variance request here before the board is to reduce the front yard setback from 25 feet to 20 feet and the side yard setback from 7 feet to 4 feet and 6 inches and the rear from 15 to 5. And this is for the construction of the three-story single-family residence. Um, this property is a corner lot um, in the central Tampa planning district. And here in the aerial, you see that the subject property is highlighted in the orange um, um, block that you see right there. This. Uh, this property went through uh, a formal decision, and that was to determine the legal non-conforming status of the site. This is a site that is smaller than your typical um, lot size for the RM12. And so they went through a, a FDM, which was approved um, as a legal non-conforming um, lot. This was reviewed by right-of-way, transportation, and natural resources. Right-of-way had no comments. Um, Trans, um, natural resources had comments, however, um, the applicant has since met the requirements for um, natural resources. And transportation had no um, objections as well, um, only that they show the flare, um, which is not shown on the site plan as provided. This is a site plan that's been provided by the applicant showing the proposed um, structure, parking, and um, site conditions and the setbacks um, as requested. Um, these are pictures that the applicant has provided showing the subject site. And that is the adjoining property, the property next door as you said to the subject site. Um, we have received no letters of um, support for this variance. We have received, staff has received eight letters of objection. The letters have been provided in the staff report and subsequent letters um, have been provided um, to you today. Um, the memo from transportation was also included in the staff report. In the determination of the variance request before the board tonight, you would consider section 27-80 as the criteria for approving the variance and staff is available if you have any questions. Ms. Bender, you said um, one quick question. You said that sure. you, the transportation had no comments. There is a note in here that transportation was concerned about the driveway length. Has that been resolved? That was resolved, yes. Okay. All right, they thank you. did resolve that, that um, issue showing parking. And at this point, the only comment is for the flares. And um, Jonathan is here, and he can speak to that if um, need be. Okay. Jonathan Scott, Transportation Planning, give us. I was okay with the driveway length. It's all fine, and they're just going to have to show the flares at the time of permitting. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, is the applicant here? Come on up. State your name, your address, and confirm that you've been sworn, uh, and then you'll have 10 minutes to make your presentation, please. Um, uh, 
I'm Asad Sheikh uh, for 426 South Oregon Avenue, uh, Tampa. My name is Franklin Sebastian. I live at 1919 West Walnut Street. Um, I'm a graduate architect and I've presented the uh, schematics for Mr. Terrific. And you've both been sworn this evening? Yes. yes. Thank you. All right, you have 10 minutes. All right. Um, I guess the overhead projector is the best method. Do we? You can use the overhead, or there's a computer if you have uh, electronic data. Oh, okay. I didn't bring the computer. We'll go with the graphics here. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Um, this is a little bit large. Am I have to move around or zoom it? Zoom it out. Yeah, that's. Okay, that's, that's pretty good, yeah. Um, a little of this is redundant. You've already uh, presented kind of the context that we're talking about here on uh, Oregon and Horatio, corner of Oregon and Horatio. Um, I've highlighted the subject there. I've also um, taken this view. Um, I would like to present forward that this is in a unique neighborhood. It's got uh, a lot of different architecture. It's got some historic uh, content that's very important to us all, but we also see some densities, and um, that's important now too in Tampa as it's a growing town. Um, close to Hyde Park Village, uh, right close to the Selman Expressway, and um, I think it's uh, a fun project. It could be a little bit controversial because it's, it's contemporary, it's modern. And um, that is a subject of concern for some people. Um, but then again, um, it's what's great about life. Sometimes it's diverse, you know. Um, I have a similar uh, site plan there. There I've highlighted uh, the location. Again, a ratio in Oregon. Um, I, I'll point out too here, I guess I can use my finger as a pointer, um, this uh, rack of plaiding here, of course, is uh, townhouses, uh, attached townhouses. They're three stories tall. Uh, this structure is uh, four and five stories tall. Um, the rest of uh, the block that we're talking about has some older structures. One thing that's interesting, and we'll go in a little deeper, is the uh, accessory structures that are uh, common along this joined alleyway. Those accessory structures are pushed close to to the, the alleyway, sometimes as low as six foot off uh, the back set back there. Um, that's quite acceptable for a, a neighborhood like this. It's interesting they're two stories high, too. I'll move on to uh, a little closer view of our site. As, as I was mentioning, you can see the, uh, the more intense buildings just to the west. Um, you can see these. Uh, attached, or these detached accessory structures along the alleyway. Um, the two properties that um, abut are um, of concern. Um, the one that's right next door um, is set very close to the side. It was added onto, there's some appendages to the back, so um, standard setbacks were not, uh, were not in use there. Uh, these two lots uh, on the end of the alley are rather short. Uh, this particular house was, I suppose, given a variance in that their backyard um, is very close to the back property line. They're not, not using standard variant, the standard uh, requirements there for house. And this one, too, is very close. Um, this, again, is our site plan, which we've seen. And, you know, um, when it was brought up by transportation that we may have a, a little bit of a problem with our parking, we uh, were able to push the parking area back a little bit, push it just back a little bit. Right now, there is no sidewalk. So the entire uh, city of Tampa right away, which comes up to the property line, is just green space right now. Um, on the parking, you know, we were posed with uh, probably three different options here. One would be to do um, 
what we see all along uh, Oregon Avenue as we go north, uh, people park right in what would be the front yard. This uh, house is addressed to Oregon, so that's the front of the property. So the vehicles, uh, in essence, would have been on a pad and taking up the whole front yard. Uh, another alternative would have been to petition for a uh, detached accessory structure at the rear. Uh, those setbacks can be as little as three feet uh, if there's no eave overhang. So that could have pushed us very close to what would be our backyard, but it's sort of a side yard also. Um, we opted for reducing the square footage on the ground plane and using this carport um, system to park the vehicles properly. This gives us a front yard that we can landscape and can be very pleasing for the streetscape. And then uh, we, we go up from there. We go two more levels up from there to provide uh, what's a somewhat average home today, 2,500 square feet, 2,600 square feet would be our intentions, uh, but it did require three levels. Uh, it's a contemporary design, so there are no roof pitches, there are flat roofs, and then there's the possibility that we may require uh, a service elevator which could possibly push the penthouse slightly above the 35 foot mark, um, that I understand can be acceptable. Um, the context is similar to what was presented earlier. Um, to the west, there's some density, multifamily. Uh, to the right, it's, it's a little more low scale. It's, uh, this is our site right here. This is a, a nice, nice structure there. Um, I've taken a walk to the west on these views, we can see the scale of the building that's right across the street. It's uh, actually five stories up on the upper levels. It's got a large vehicle entrance here. And then of course, a little further down the street is the famous bread factory. I, I remember that uh, many years ago, S smelling that bread wafting through the neighborhood. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. Going to the east, um, this is our site. Uh, this is the uh, adjoining neighbor right to the east. Um, this is an alley, active alley, and then the property that's just the next lot to the east. And again, these are very short lots. I also included a view of that same alley uh, from the north of the block looking south. And again, we can see all the accessory structures, the parking, garages, and accessory structures are right down the alley and they're very close to the backyard setbacks or to the back set lines. Um, here's a little context uh, going north in Oregon there. This is the multifamily, um, very nice structure. Um, very short setbacks. This is our block. This is within our block. And uh, again, this picture here kind of indicates the sort of dilemma we were confronted with. We can um, park the vehicles directly in front on a very narrow lot. That's not the best aesthetically in my mind. So we did push our garage to the back and ask for that. A minute and a half left in your Thank 10 minutes. Thank you. I'd better hustle along. So, um, the HPC part. To talk about some of the architecture, these are two uh, three-story structures on our block. Well, this one's just uh, the next block over. One is contemporary, one's a little more traditional, uh, masked up. They're fortunate, they've got a large lot to work with. Here's another three-story structure on uh, the Orleans block, uh, just kind of catty corner. Here's another view of it from up high. Um, it fits in quite nicely. The setbacks are very small here side to side, um, and then this is some stuff that is on the site there, it's, uh, or on the, it's, it's just a continuation of um, some stuff that we have loaded earlier, our site plan, a little view of the front elevation, the possibility of uh, putting a little gate in front of the carport. Um, yeah, you guys can see that good, oblique perspective. 
discussing proximity. We did try to minimize the fenestration on the north uh, in respect to this neighbor here. So there won't be a lot of visuals to the north to the adjoining neighbor. Um, and again, this view down here, th th this is the west side of the street. So you can see there's quite a bit of density there. And I think we can speak well to it. Frank, if I may make one point, um, I think the most kind of important thing that ties us all together is that uh, there was an existing structure on the lot. Uh, we had people come and look at it when we purchased it, and it was kind of deemed beyond what would be a feasible renovation. HPC, Elaine Lund, and Dennis Fernandez, which I uploaded into the system, approved it for demolition um, because of the age. It had to be approved. So, I, you know, it was not a self-imposed hardship where we kind of tore down a structure um, just to build a new one, and now we're complaining about the lot we were left with. The existing structure uh, was not salvageable, and we're not asking for excess setbacks. We're just looking for uh, what's necessary to put, you know, a product today on the lot. I think the most important thing is, we, you know, the reason we did a attached uh, garage um, was because we didn't want to do a detached garage and get even closer to the rear neighbor. So I understand we're asking for a pretty, that's the most considerable exception, 15 feet to five, but that was the reason. Versus going three feet with a detached structure or a detached two-story structure and really you know, imposing on his lot. Understood. Thank you. Your, uh, your 10 minutes is up. Um, let's give an opportunity for sure. others to speak, and then there will be a few minutes for rebuttal afterwards um, and opportunity for questions as well. Thank you. Um, all right, is there anyone from the audience who wishes to speak about this petition this evening? Come on up. Multiple people. Uh, so one of you want to choose who wants to go first? Or? Right. Come on up, state your name, your address, confirm that you've been sworn. You'll have three minutes to make your presentation. Thank you. I'm John Jennings of 1405 West Horatio. Directly, oh, I sworn in. Awesome. Thanks. So I am directly behind where the uh, structure is going to be built. It's the, asking for the 15 feet to go to 5 feet. I have a courtyard right behind that where I built a spa and uh, spent a lot of money on it. And to have a structure so close to my property, I couldn't grow plants out there. I mean, it's so close that it's very unsightly to my property. So that's where I stand. Okay. Thank you very much. Come on up, state your name, your address, confirm that you've been sworn. Peter Giansanti, 422 South Oregon Avenue. I'm directly north, the, light, the Lightning House. And? I have been sworn. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you have three minutes. Um, so a, a couple things. First, I didn't hear a hardship when he came up. The hardship is that the house is too big and doesn't fit on the lot. I just don't see that as a hardship. The second thing is, uh, in speaking with uh, Pam Canella, who's the president of the Hyde Park Historic Association, um, there's significant concerns with parking, blocking the stop sign, flooding, green space, uh, just to name a few. Also, I literally could pass him a cup of coffee in the morning and never see the sun again. So the building that's across the street is not five stories, it's four. Um, the townhouses that are across the street certainly don't block the sun from the west side of the, or from the east side of the street. Um, the structure that they're trying to put in there is taller than the trees that are on the lot that have been there for 100 years. So my, I'm opposed to the structure, um, and my concerns are parking, the stop sign, um, there's already no parking in the area. Um, and the way that they have the parking set up now, if for some instance, um, a guest uh, or someone that tries to park in the parking lot or in their garage happens to hit the gas and not the brake. He's now in my living room. So those are my concerns. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, anyone else uh, in the audience wishing to uh, speak about this petition this evening? All right. Um, seeing none, I will open it up for questions from the board. Uh, we'll get to you. You'll, you'll have a response. The, the procedure is now we have questions, so uh, the response will be after all questions, after all public comments. Uh, I have a question. I, yes. I think for staff, um, 
if I see the request for um, setbacks, but not for a height setback, is it within the height um, realm right now as it's being presented? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, I have a couple of questions for the applicant or his um, architect. So, um, you know, right now you're asking for a reduction of the side yard setback from seven feet to four feet, six inches on the, see the north side. Um, why is it possible to like set the house so that, you know, you meet the setbacks on the north side, but you reduce the setbacks on the south side? That seems like it would affect fewer people. Yeah, that's a very good question, and it probably leads into uh, the specific definitive uh, statement we should have made about our, our hardship. Um, that's a very narrow lot. It's, it's 36 feet wide. Um, with the standard setbacks, that reduces the width of the house. Uh, I won't say it's not doable, but it becomes a very, very narrow structure. Um, probably not totally comfortable for a family, perhaps. Um, Quick question. That's is, the main reason. Did, are you just proposing shifting the structure? Yeah, yeah. So it would, it would, it would maintain the same um, width, I guess, but why can't you move it to the south? Just oh, excellent, excellent. We excellent. would be so open to that, right? We would have to request uh, a variance on the other side. The notice would have to change, right? Okay. Yeah. So you would have to re-notice um, so that you modified your request, but uh, that would be something. I mean, technically, there are other things that could be approved tonight, but um, that's that's a question for you. But yeah, we're, we're open. Yeah, that would uh, probably be helpful for the gentleman that has some concern about our proximity there. So that that would be great. Um, okay, and then let's see. I have one more question. Um, but it has slipped my mind right now, so I think that's that's all I have right now. Okay. Uh, any other questions? No? I have a couple. Um, so has Johnson covered one of them, um, and I think it's important. These are some of these are for uh, staff or and or legal. Um, so the height issue is not within our purview this evening, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, the uh, does it meet? Some of the neighbors have raised uh, green space concerns. Does the lot currently meet the green space requirements? It does, and I can uh, defer to Stephen to speak to that. Okay, natural resources, if you want to come up and just confirm for us that it meets green space and that there's no impact on any trees. Hello, Stephen with Natural Resources. So yeah, it looks like the lot meets the 25%. It is a small lot. So therefore, small amount of green space. Um, all the trees are in the right of way. They do have a driveway that kind of goes in between. So the driveway will have to be on grade, pervious pavement, different options. They have other options though they can work with to not impact. Um, the offsite tree, I know the neighbor has an oak. I think it's 27 inch and a palm. So they'll have to take special considerations when they're doing the driveway. Okay. Um, and then I don't think you're you're the person to address flooding questions, right? I am not. Yeah, I didn't think so. Um, Ms. Madhu, maybe that's for you. Um, if there are uh, any concerns about flooding, uh, can you confirm for us that those have to be addressed during permitting and will uh, really aren't for our purview right. this evening? That, so during permitting, assuming this house is um, is approved uh, hypothetically, then they would have to deal with that through some sort of drainage plan, things like that, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, and then last for uh, transportation, Mr. Scott, some, some concerns were raised about parking. Can you tell us how um, those parking concerns um, are addressed? Is there... Uh, it, it, are, it, are they permitted to park in the right of way? Anything like that? How, how is the how does the city treat that? Uh, transportation planning, Jonathan Scott. So they'll have to park 
on their property and they have to have two paved parking spaces. So they have two spaces in their garage. And then for the vehicle entrance, they'll just have to have 10 feet from the property line to the vehicle entrance of the garage. Okay. So, what, so two are required? Sorry. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, they, and they've met those two under the plan? That's correct, yeah. Okay. Um, and then guest parking, street parking, things like that are permitted in this neighborhood? Yeah, they can have their, they can park on the street and guests and stuff, but as a new single family residence, they just have to have two parking spaces on their property. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks. Um, those are all the questions I had at this time. Um, anybody else? Ms. Johnson, you had some more? Um, yeah, I'm just kind of soaking this all in, and I guess, you know, looking at the character of the neighborhood and this very nar narrow and small lot, um, that I feel like the site plan just doesn't quite um, um, help the neighborhood that much, where, like, where, um, you know, maybe the setback should have been on the other side to give the neighbor more space. Um, maybe the front porch could be squeezed tighter. You know, like, I just don't know if, like, I don't see a lot of effort being made to, like, tie into the neighborhood so well. Um, is, is there anything you could do with the, the front setbacks? Or, um, I know it's a small lot, but it is what it is. Um, is there square footage considerations that you could you modify? Know, the, the lot size is, again, I believe the hardship. Um, we have uh, specified in the plan uh, the minimum front porch that's allowed into the front yard. It's eight feet out into the front yard. We've also exercised a little bit of an overhang on level two that's allowed to go out three feet from the front of the house. Uh, this is called a balcony. That's part of the, the code. Um, I think the big concern often is when you design for a contemporary look or a contemporary aesthetic, it, it, is, it is different. And it's something that um, it can be difficult for some people, traditionalists, specifically in a neighborhood like that. Um, we've just finished two very narrow um, buildings um, up in the NoHo district, uh, very contemporary. I did one with Assad about two years ago. Um, it was well received by all the people in the neighborhood, but um, it just may not be everybody's cup of tea. Contemporary, modern may not be the aesthetic that all are looking for. I guess I'm, I'm not really addressing contemporary modern, but just kind of um, the, the, the placement the of the building and the footprint. And mm -hmm. it just looks like you didn't really consider any of the setbacks for, except for that one seven foot there, and just wanted to know like your, your process for your decisions. Yeah, it was partially program driven. What would be our level one, which is kitchen, dining, eating, family area is reduced to about 500 square feet. Um, we did include what would be the front porch or terrace, we may call it, uh, with opening doors so that space could be expanded if the weather was good. But um, yeah, the amount of space is pretty limited on that site, it really is. I think the important point is also, you know, and we would be again open to shift the footprint of the structure towards the front setback, but the reason we intentionally left more front yard space is because you know we believe in you know having a nice front yard presence it contributes to these neighborhoods to have a nice manicured front yard versus we already have no backyard um, so the plan was to you know give that an aesthetic appeal to the there's a lot of foot uh, foot traffic it's Hyde Park Village people are constantly walking by so to give something that interacts nicely with the street versus either having parking or fronting the structure the front of the lot giving ourselves, yes, it would solve for the neighbor and the distance from the neighbor issue, um, and it would give us a yard a, as well. But then we would have a structure that doesn't interact well with the, with the street in, in our view, and, and that, that was very important to us, is give the structure some interaction with the street, give us, give whoever is gonna live in this house ability to you know, sit on the front porch and have that street interaction, which is what we are trying to encourage in the neighborhood, and I think, that actually ties in uh, well with the neighborhood. A lot of the homes have front balconies, front porches, and just bringing that street level interaction versus prioritizing backyard was important to us. That being said, if um, you know, it, it's what it takes to get it done, to shift the footprint 
a few feet forward and then create that separation from the neighbor. Uh, we're not opposed to that. We thought this fit better in neighborhood context, but we're, we're kind of open to shifting if needed. It wouldn't um, compromise what's already a you know, small first level footprint. And if it would solve some people's concerns, we, we would love to do that. Ms. Johnson, may I just bring a photo up again that um, maybe yeah. reiterates what Asad was talking about? And, and this is um, the streetscape here. In keeping our front yard set back in conformity with the other houses on the street, we are all talking to the street with that same front porch aesthetic. In fact, um, it is a front porch, so the neighbors could talk via front porch. That's, uh, I know we talk about that a little bit in a certain terms, septad and other community um, interactions. So, um, but I'm hoping for suggestions, I really am. And I do agree with the neighbor's point that we can pass coffee and, uh, you know, hopefully we will be passing coffee at some point in time. It's a urban neighborhood, the houses, some of these lots, for example, this lot was cut into three lots. Uh, we got a letter actually 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes before we even got to this hearing. It was uploaded in a cella. Nice neighbor said, hey, these lots were cut up in the 80s. They were. And that's the context of, of the neighborhood, right? That, you know, it's not a perfect manicured suburban neighborhood. There's different uh, orientations, different type of uh, properties. And, you know, we kind of, it's eclectic. Uh, there's a modern home built, huge, uh, I don't know if you have that photo, Franklin, on a, on a zeal. So what we're doing is not completely typical for the area, but it's not unheard of. Um, so I ho hope, hope that helps. I mean, kind of, you know, we, we did try to give consideration to the neighbors when coming um, up with our uh, uh, requests. Thank you. If this, this was the no. okay. I, home that we were referring to. Sorry. That's all right. I, I actually had one more question. Yeah. Um, Ms. Madhu, did you have something you had to jump in on? Yeah, we had something to add to. Sure. Um, but you could go ahead and ask your question. While okay. I pull up the uh, well, my first question was actually going to be for you anyway. Okay. Uh, just to follow up to some, well, follow up to something that was said earlier. Mm -hmm. um, if parking were separated into an accessory structure on this lot, mm -hmm. how big could that accessory structure be? Basically, what they have right now. <laughs> well, so the same so, size, it would same, just same need to size, be. Same size, it would if, just be detached. If they put five feet between the house and that accessory structure, right? Five feet is the minimum? Yes. Okay, so let's say they hypothetically, they moved, they put a five foot separation between their parking structure and the house. Mm -hmm. How close could that, that same size structure be to um, the rear property if? Uh, uh, under this hypothetical, that structure shifted. They could have it at three feet. So smaller than what they're asking for now? Correct. Right. Okay. Um, then I have a follow-up question to one of our neighbors who, um, who was it the gentleman, are you, you were the one who was talking about coffee passing, right? Yeah. Okay. And um, are you the person who's to the rear of, of the house or are you on the side? North. You're on the north side. Okay. So um, where was the gentleman who was to the rear? Would you come up real quick? Because I do want to ask you this, and I want to give you an opportunity to talk about it. Thank you. Just understanding that if they do separate this, this property um, and make a separate accessory structure, they can come to three feet, not five feet, from your house. Well, and that's by right. We, we wouldn't be able to stop them if they wanted to do that. They wouldn't even have to come here and ask us for that. I just want to ask you, if, if that would be preferable or if you're- It would be preferable because then you wouldn't have the three stories. You'd have a separate building. So they'd be detached. So you'd have okay. the three stories over here. Right, the height would be different. And the height would be different. So I could have sunshine and it would be fine. Okay. So that's- I, I, I appreciate that. And, that. and that's why I wanted to I ask you I just need that. the light to come in. Yeah, okay. And uh, one last question. Well, real and, quick. And that, that's a question you can- Is ask. there sidewalks? No sidewalks? Uh, the city will have requirements at permitting as to when the sidewalks uh, are installed. Okay. I think they require okay. the installation of sidewalks for new builds. That's what I thought. Either too. that or we have to pay into the sidewalk fund, but we always put the sidewalks. Appreciate okay. it. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Did you have yes. a question to follow up about Just that? Just to follow up on the accessory structures, um, what's the maximum height on that? I mean, we have accessory structures two houses down that are two stories. Yep. So, um, 
Jane Amato Development Coordination. The highest is 15, but they could, we have people who have come in for variances for accessory structures that take that up to 22. Or but 15 without a variance? 15 without a variance, okay. correct. All right. Good. I, I did have a follow up because I, I heard members of the board talking about moving the structure towards the south and reducing that setback from seven at this point. Um, transportation has a requirement of 10 feet for that driveway. So either way, that garage would has to remain be, has the way to be it set is back, because yeah. they have to have that 10 foot um, mm, okay. driveway. So even if they shifted the house, the garage would still have to uh, need a variance for that side. Okay, or they could then go back to the separation issue, move the accessory structure back but again these are all hypotheticals that right. aren't actually in front of us right but for this site plan that they have submitted they would need to maintain that 10 foot for the driveway okay all right and a question for transportation real quick if they decide to shift this away uh, to the south would that create some sight line issues and some safety issues for the site triangles at the corners uh, Jonathan Scott transportation planning that won't cause any set obstruction they're far enough back you know from the corner there it's won't be an issue because and that's because of the city right of way yeah you got like 16 feet you know that'd be fine even if they it, and then they're going that the step back from the house so it won't even cause a side obstruction at all from somebody stopping at the corner there okay. mm -hmm. awesome okay i don't have any i don't have any further questions anyone else okay uh now you have uh five minutes for rebuttal and he addressed any of the issues that were raised. Okay, uh, and, and I, I think it'd be first time doing this. So it, the letters that were uploaded kind of from concerned neighbors that didn't necessarily speak here, you guys are privy to those. Can I respond to those? You can, you Perfect. have five minutes, you can talk about whatever you want to talk about. Perfect, very good. Shoes, like yeah, all right, fair enough. Um, okay, so uh, one uh, comment came in from a Renee saying our setback exceptions are excessive. Uh, if we had a standard sized lot, then we wouldn't need the setback. So it's just like, you know, we're asking for them strictly based on the size of the lot. She said, based on the size of the lot, the requests are excessive. The request only exists because the lot is a small lot. Uh, we had a comment on density, that we're bringing too much density. We replaced one house. We're trying to replace it with another house. There's no less density we could do than one house. Um, so we're not increasing the density. Um, in terms of all the comments of the flooding, uh, two points, obviously that's something that we address at the permitting stage, uh, but Franklin, very thoughtful architect, so we'll go beyond whatever the bare minimum is required by the city to ensure that you know, there's a thoughtful and logical you know, resolution to any flooding concerns. Um, what else? Yeah, there were a lot of uh, comments about the kind of the flooding concerns, which I think were well addressed. Uh, there was a comment about the height. Uh, we kind of already addressed that. We're within uh, where we are by right. But, you know, again, we wanted to be respectful of the neighborhood. And we are in a context where there are three-story townhomes right across the street, four- and five-story uh, multifamily dwellings as well nearby. Um, and then, uh, you know, final question that we had about um, uh, a neighbor named Julie uh, commented that the uh, property would be an eyesore. Uh, we wanted to be transparent with what we wanted to build. We could have just submitted a site plan um, and left it like to be determined what we're going to put on there. It was not our responsibility necessarily from my understanding to provide renderings, but we wanted to be honest, straightforward with what we intend to do on the lot instead of coming up with a three-story structure, telling people we're going to build something traditional and then pulling a fast one. Um, and, you know, calling it an eyesore, I mean, I, I take up objection to that. It's offensive and subjective, and we're going to create an architecturally significant structure that everybody in the neighborhood can be proud of. Um, you know, our intention is not to come in there, you know, throw up some box, cut off everybody's light supply, and then leave the neighborhood. I do respect those concerns, but we're going to make sure that th this is an addition to the neighborhood. Um, and, uh, and finally, there were a lot of comments about staying within the known rules. The whole point of the variance is to get a reasonable exception to what's on the books. Um, it's to resolve hardships like this. We're not the first or the last people in the neighborhood to ask for setback exceptions. And specifically in Dobieville, 
Um, you know, the side yard setbacks are very common. Most of the houses are quite close to each other to, you know, pass coffee, pass a cup of salt, whatever it might be. So we're within that context, but we tried to be as respectful as possible. Um, that's, uh, I think that's pretty much it. I think that addresses any of the questions, comments that anybody had. And then just lastly, not to uh, beat a dead horse, but the whole reason we asked for the five foot setback exception um, because when it's a, when the structure is attached, you need to ask for that exception. We didn't want to go the three foot route and build an in-law suite above a garage, especially given the fact that somebody may use that as a rental property or rent out part of their house and then look at the neighbor's pool. So we specifically oriented uh, uh, the, the garage as attached to solve for that concern. We wanted to be respectful of neighbor's privacy as much as we could, given the lot we have. Um, if our lot was 50 foot deeper, um, then we would have had more um, separation. But we, we really tried to do the best we could from the front end and, and keep in mind what concerns could potentially come up before they did come up. Um, that's uh, kind of it. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, do you have something further to say? No, you still have a little no. bit of time. I thank you for your attention. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Um, well, thank you, everyone, this evening for a uh, good, robust discussion. Um, I will now close the public hearing and open it up for a motion from the board. I'll make a motion. Okay. I move that the variance request for case VRB 21-136 for property located at 426 South Oregon Avenue be granted as depicted on the site plan presented at the public hearing for a reduction of the front yard setback from 25 feet to 20 feet, the side yard setback from seven feet to four feet, six inches, and the rear yard setback from 15 feet to five feet with an encroachment for eaves and gutters. Based on the applicant presenting competent and substantial evidence in the record and at this public hearing of an unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty when considering the five hardship criteria set forth in section 27-80 of the city code, um, specifically that the alleged hardship or practical difficulty is unique and singular to this property. Um, the city of Tampa has determined this lot to be um, a legal non-conforming use. Um, and it's exceptionally small, especially when compared to other lots within this same zoning category. Um, additionally, the hardship or practical difficulty doesn't result from the um, actions of the applicant due uh, in part to the lot's unique size. Um, and the applicant has demonstrated that he's attempted to align with the look and feel of the neighborhood um, by way of example the you know rear yards in many of the adjacent properties um, are, are very short and abut uh, adjacent alleyways okay uh, we have a motion do we have a second i'll second okay we have a motion and a second uh do we have, uh, is there a reason for discussion on this? Does anyone want to have discussion? Um, I'm going to not deny it, just I believe that this lot is just too small for the proposed structure and its program for this neighborhood. Okay. Um, all right. I mean, I, I, I just to tack on to that, I, I really um, am wrestling with the issues here. Um, it was a well-made motion. Um, and there are a lot of good reasons to approve this. I do see the concerns that the neighbors have raised, um, but it's a very small legal lot and they have a right to build something on it. Um, and they have a right to go up to the height that they are going up. Um, they have a right to build a usable house on this property um, I really have no problem with the front yard setback. Um, it, I would have really preferred that they maybe shifted south away from the neighbor um, to the north. Um, but the, um, we got like a three, two and a half foot adjustment there. It's not awful. It's not great, but it's not awful. Um, the only piece that really bothers me um, is the um the the five feet 15 to five um uh, you know with the height of this and that's the only piece that really troubles me um so uh i don't know what 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 do your what does everyone else think about that 
Um, I, you know, I, I think you make a good point. Um, I think that you know the, the neighbor who is immediately, I guess, to the east, um, you know, raises a good point about his concern with, with the lighting. Um, you know, I, I still think that the size of the lot, um, which the city has determined, you know, is legal nonconforming. I, I don't feel like we can say that these are this is the result of the actions of the applicant. Um, but so, I. And not inclined to change my motion. However, um, I can bifurcate it if we think that there needs to be a continuance with respect to the rear yard setback adjustment. Okay, I would. Um, I don't see any you don't see any. It just sounds like the whole thing might be continued. Well. Um, all right, well, let's, let's go ahead and um, vote on it, and we'll see how it goes. Okay. All right. Uh, all, so we have a motion to approve um, and a second. All those in favor of um, the motion to approve say aye. Aye. All those in, opposed? All right. Um, the motion passes three to one. Uh, if anyone wishes to appeal this to the city council. Uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Uh, johnson Velez. Susan Johnson Velez Legal Department, and I apologize for not, um, I think um, when you were explaining the request for continuance, um, and I just started looking up uh, the rules of procedure just in case there was a tie vote. I appreciate it. All right, so, so what do you got for us? Um, so as far as voting goes, um, although a simple majority is required to conduct routine business and to deny an application, there is required a, at least four members of the board have to vote to approve an application. So since, there aren't four, then okay. according to your rules of procedure, this would automatically, automatically. get carried over to the next. So that means that any meeting. motion, any um, would require vote that unanimous. is not unanimous. Correct. This okay. evening. Correct. So okay. I apologize right. for, not, well, for not clarifying there, that earlier. The so. rules are the rules. So this is automatically continued until the, do we have space on next month? Did that not get changed a while ago? Um, Due to the fact that it was only five. Board yeah, meetings. I don't. It, well, it's Johnson. automatically carried over to the next board meeting. Okay, I thought or it was simple as, majority, as but speech. but you're saying the rules say it, it says a simple majority of those members present will is sufficient to conduct routine business or to deny an application. However, okay. the vote of at least four members is required to approve an application. Okay, those are rules. So, All right, sorry, so this one is there. automatically continued June until June. 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 Okay. All right. See you again next month. Um, I don't know. You, you're not going to be here. Well, are we, we might need some more people. Tell tell city council uh, that they need to get some people here. Otherwise, uh, we're going to have this recurring. Okay. Okay. Can I ask you a quick question? Uh, staff is available for questions. Sure. Sure. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Got it. Awesome. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Let's move on to 2225. Sorry. Susan Johnson Velez, Legal Department, again. Um, you might want to ask again. Yeah, in light let's, of this we'll, we'll do that before we, before we move forward. The, Just so everyone understands what's going to happen. Um, if you don't, have, you don't have a unanimous consent in favor of your uh, petitions, um, you're going to get automatically continued. So. You can choose to um, automatically get a continuance now. Uh, you can roll forward with your petition, and if you have unanimous uh, approval, it'll get approved. Um, or alternatively, it could be denied or continued, depending on how things move forward this evening. <clears throat> okay, so if there is anyone who would like to have a continuance, would like to just seek a continuance now, um, let uh, Ms. Madhu, no, and she will address that. Otherwise, we'll move forward with our petitions as set. Okay. Uh, 2225. Jane Amada, Development Coordination. 
The next case before the board is VRB 2225. This is addressed at 3902 West Take on Street. This is zoned RS60, residential single family. And the property owner are David Siambanis and Dawn Elizabeth Stone. The variance request presented before the board tonight is to reduce the front yard setback from 60 feet to 26 feet and the eve to eve separation from five feet to three inches. And this is for an accessory structure, a shed um, next to the home. This is the subject property. It is a corner lot in the South Tampa Planning District, right at the corner of Taken Street and South uh, Church Street, Church Avenue. Um, this uh, was a work without permits. Um, it was reviewed by, I mean, since they were cited, um, they have gone into put in a building permit for the driveway extension. However, because the accessory structure does not meet the required setbacks they here for the variance. Um, this was reviewed by natural resources and found consistent. Transportation found them consistent. Right away found them consistent. And natural resources with the comments that there are no trees impacted by the work, um, by the unpermitted work. This is the site plan that the applicant has provided showing um, the existing conditions on the site. A little difficult to read, however, um, this portion right here um, highlighted with the um, with the hatch with the red um, dotted lines, that is the shed right next to the structure. So the existing structure is the one that is in um, some green. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit difficult to read, but the green is the existing structure and then the shed is the one that's right next to it. We received no letters of support or objection for this variance request. And um, there are no staff memos. Um, all the comments have been included in the staff report. Um, the board shall consider section 27-80 in the determination of the variance request presented before you today. And if you have any questions, I will be available on hand. Okay. Um, is are the applicants here? Applicant here? Went up. All right. State your name, your address. Confirm that you've been sworn, and uh, then you. Yeah. Then David, you have ten minutes. David Simon Banis, um, uh, three nine zero two West Taken Street, and uh, I've been sworn in. Great. Uh, so basically, uh, my household increased with my fiance moving in, and her daughter and things of that nature. So I realized that uh, none of our uh, cars and, and bikes were going to fit. Uh, I tried to put the bikes on the wall inside the garage and it was a hazard, you know, fell on the, fell on the, on the cars that trying to have my 12 year old take the bike off the walls was hazardous enough. So I decided to put a shed, a shed. That's all I, I didn't, uh, didn't know much more than that. So I called a, a company in Clearwater that just makes pre-made pre -made sheds and they bring them out to you and they, they put them there. Uh, we decided on a space that was most, uh, most probably the only space I had available to it, um, and it was uh, it was placed and, and mounted to the ground. It is not mounted or, or it is not placed. Uh, there's no entrance into the garage or anything. It's a, it's truly a shed. Uh, I did have it uh, you know painted so it looks it looks appreciable you know curb appeal that uh, that it, it looked appropriate. Uh, so then the kids could get to their bicycles and things like that without any hazard to the to the cars or or obviously to them. Um, let me show you some of the pictures. So you know, so here there's a walkway to the to the side of it. If I if I go any farther out that way, uh, there's no way to get to the back of the yard or to the the dumpsters and things I need to bring out there. Um, I, I can't bring it any forward backwards into the artificial grass there's no way they can get behind the it has to go behind the fence it's just not feasible that they would be able to pull anything out from the back there uh with the dog there too would be it just it's just not going to happen i couldn't put any farther back because i had you know the electricity things and things of that nature so you know it's a, it's a very slim space to uh to find a place to put a shed um 
I needed that shed uh, for practical reasons as well as safety reasons. I just can't have my kids pulling things off the wall and things of that nature. <clears throat> I don't think it affected anybody. It's got it's got a, a appropriate curb appeal. It's not attached to the garage. It's just a shed. Uh, at the most, uh, most uh, the, probably the only real place I could put it. Um, you know, really, I don't really have much more to say. Let's see if we have another, another pictures you need to see. Yeah, I think I might have showed you. Here's the walkway, you know, you're going to get to the side of the shed, so. Uh, and then, you know, I, I, I uh, I made the assumption, as a lot of us do, unfortunately, that whoever's going to build the shed or put it into you is going to go check and see if it's appropriate, uh, which is, I realize, now my responsibility, but um, wasn't clear by that. That's why I put it in there first. I thought I was just bringing in a shed. It turned out to be more than that. Uh, and uh, at this point, it's bolted uh, to the ground. Um, it would be a great deal of, uh, uh, you know, painful deal to try to get remove it at this point and it's still very necessary okay uh, does that conclude your presentation this evening yeah all right um, let's see if there's anyone from the audience who wishes to talk about this is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak about this petition all right seeing none uh, does anyone on the board have questions for the petitioner <clears throat> Sorry. Um, does the shed currently have any utilities, light, air conditioning, anything like that? Power? No, it's just a it's a wooden shed. It's a wooden shed. Um, do you have any photos of like the whole front of your house? I'm I'm interested in what's on the other side of. The oh, I see. Uh, let me see if I can get that. Really, the other side is the grass uh, going down a slope. You know, so it's really not accessible. Maybe I can find a picture of some sort. But and that it really there's no way it would it, I'd have to have to have the it would have to be leveled it, it just wouldn't work. Okay. And then um, I have a quick question for staff. Um, so, the sh based on the pictures, like the shed looks like it's right up against the house. What makes it an accessory structure as opposed to like part of the permanent structure? Um, there, there's really no attachment. There's nothing that connects the two structures together. It's just space. Okay. In theory, if they were attached, that would be part of the principal structure? Correct. Okay. Yeah, and that's, and that's what I found out too, but I, I only put as close as I could because I needed the, the walkway, but I guarantee it, it's not attached. There's no, you know, it was a pre-made shed brought in, you know. Um, I guess this might be a question for staff or legal. Um, I mean, the shed looks nice, it matches the house, it doesn't detract from the street view, but you are asking for a, a setback of three inches. So if that stays with the property, it means that someone can build or expand, right, to that three inch. Is that true? It's that three inches stays with the property? Is, is there any way that... So the three inches is for the eave to eave separation between okay. um, structures. So he, it's supposed to be at five feet eave to eave, but at this point it's just three inches separating the principal structure and the shed. So that's what that reduction is. Okay, so. Okay. So there's no setback on the side that's being requested? No, just for the front and the eave to eave separation. Okay, and the front, it only needs 60 feet because it's an accessory structure. Correct. Were it um, part of the principal structure, okay. the principal structure is already set back where it needs to be. Correct. Okay. Um, and then I'm, I'm having a little trouble reading this site plan. What What is the old house outline versus... I, I, I had a draftsman do it, and I'm not sure how. There was a house before mine that they had broken but, down. But that's not there now, right? No. So okay. I'm not sure how that was, uh, but he got it from this, I don't know. I had to have it made. That's how he did it. So if, if I move that, you know, if I had that five foot, it'd be, it, it wouldn't work. You know, I'd be right in the middle of the walkway. There, I don't even think there's five feet there for me to, to move it that far. So I can't go that far. And I thought if I was far enough up, up against the, you know, the distance from the garage to the to the street would be reasonable. So, um, so, so 
Ms. Johnson, Johnson please. Wesley Legal Department. I did just want to clarify that and answer the second part of your question that yes, if the variance is granted, it does run with the land. And so something happens to this shed, somebody could, you know, remove this one and put something else in as long as they meet whatever variance you grant this evening uh, that would continue. But it is not principal structure, so they couldn't build the house out to into that it space. It would be for an accessory structure. It would only be would to reconstruct an accessory structure of Correct. a similar size in a similar space. Correct. Right. Right Correct. now, it shows it at you know an eight foot you know from you know property line to the side of the house. So that's not going to change. Correct. For that EP. Right. Correct. Sorry. One one more follow up for staff. So I mean, if this gentleman were to screw the shed into the side of his house. Would there be a need for this variance? No. Okay. All right. Uh, any other questions? Seeing none, uh, you have five minutes for rebuttal if you need it. Uh, I don't think I need a rebuttal. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Then uh, with that said, we will close the public hearing and open it up for a motion from the board. Johnson. Uh, I move that the variance request for case BRB 22-25 for a property located at 20, sorry, 3902 West Takan, Takan Street. Yeah, I, I struggle with that one myself. <laughs> be granted as depicted on the site plan presented at the public hearing for a reduction of the front setback from 60 to 26 and eave to eave separation from five foot to three inches based on the applicant presenting competent and substantial evidence in the record and at this public hearing of an unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty when considering the five hardship criteria set forth in section 27-80 of the city code specifically that this um, shed doesn't really detract from the house at all um, there is a uh, lack of space and it doesn't affect the side yard setback. Okay, we have a motion to approve. And by the way, I think it's Tacon. Tacon. Thank you. But uh, <laughs> my pronunciation is not to be taken officially. Uh, is there a second? Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any need for discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Any opposed? All right, your motion is approved for it or nothing. Have a great evening. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have one. All right. Uh, moving right along, 2243. Jane Amada Development Coordination. The next case before the board this evening is VRB 2243. Address at 2510 West Tennessee Avenue. I got that one right. <laughs> um, the property owner is Andrea Gerenkov, and um, the variance request before the board tonight is to reduce the front yard setback from 25 feet to 14 feet and 5 inches, and to reduce the vehicular entrance setback from 18 feet to 14 feet and 5 inches. And this is in order to construct new single family attached dwellings. The code section in reference is section 27-156 that has the schedule of air bulk height and placement regulations for the RM16 zoning district as 25 feet for the front, 15 for the rear, 7 for the sides. And um, the transportation requirement where the structural edge of the vehicle entrance to one vehicle garage storage must be set back a minimum of 18 feet. This is an aerial showing the subject property. It is an interior lot in the South Tampa Planning District. This property was originally platted in 2011 uh, into three lots for uh, single family attached dwellings um, known as Bay Park townhomes. This is the proposed um, site or this is the, the site plan for the proposed structures showing that variance request um, for the reduction from 25 feet to 14 feet and five inches. Um, they are currently going through a, a replatting of this um, property um, to reconfigure the existing tracks. This was reviewed by 
right away. Um, they have no comments, but they found it consistent. It was reviewed by natural resources and found consistent with the comments that um, the setbacks correspond directly to the uh, Arboris report and that the reduction in the front setback would reduce the impacts made to the ground tree canopy and um, would move the building out of the protective radius with the condition that all um, landscape technical standards would be met at the time of construction. This was also reviewed by transportation and found consistent with no comments. These are pictures showing um, the subject property. On the left, you see what is um, the a view from, up the, from the house to the street. And the second picture, you see that street level looking at um, the canopies of those grand trees um, on, the on the subject property. And this showing um, the canopy as it extends over that portion of um, the front yard. Staff has, re has received no letters of objection or support for this variance request. And um, they have provided, um, oh, the wrong way. Um, Stephen will be available to speak to any questions you have regarding um, the tree or the condition and natural resources. In the determination of the, um, of the, requ the variance request before the board, the board shall consider section 27-80 as the criteria for approving um, the variance request before you. And I will be available if you have any questions. Um, if the applicant would come on up, applicant, state your name, your address, and confirm that you've been sworn. Uh, and then you'll have 10 minutes to explain to us your hardships. So um, that's the second one, the average report, oh. if you want to just. Okay, you can just okay. go to that. Um, hello, uh, my name is Elizabeth Carmody. The property address is 2510 West Tennessee Avenue, and I've been sworn in. Um, I'm the agent acting um, on behalf of the owner, Andre Gerenkov. Um, I'm the project manager with the architecture firm designing the new structures on lot two and three. Um, Andre and Anara have been living in the existing residence since 2018. Um, this meeting is to request a variance to decrease the street setback on Tennessee Avenue from the zoned 25 feet to 14, and a half, 14 feet 5 inches, and to reduce the vehicular entrance from 18 foot 5 inches to 14 foot 5 inches if the city deems that a parking variance is necessary. Um, the sole purpose for moving this setback is to protect this northern grand tree here, located on the property during the upcoming construction on lots 2 and 3. Um, so here's a Google street view of the street's current conditions and the neighboring property setbacks. This is right across the street. Um, this image also gives a clear idea of just how expansive um, the size of this tree is and its presence in the neighborhood. So we really wanna do anything that we can to protect it as much as possible. Um, so as uh, mentioned before, uh, the site does hold two grand trees on the west yard. Um, it was originally plotted by the architect John Howie, so in the drawings, if you see that 18 and a half foot where the current plot is for lot three, um, that was actually a variance that he um, got by, from the city when he first plotted this lot in 2011. So the current shape of the plots is due to his partially unbuilt design. Um, Howie did construct the existing residence, which is here in lot one, which is where my uh, the owner currently resides. Um, and yeah, got that variance from 25 feet to 18 feet. I'm assuming, again, because of the uh, grand tree there. Um, so we've been hired, as I mentioned, to design and build in lot two and three um, with respect to the design of the existing structure um, to maximize the living space within these two footprints and maintain the relationship of the height of the existing structure, which is 31 foot six inches. Um, the proposed new structure's heights will be 33 foot six inches, which is within code of this um, zone. Um, so as seen in this drawing, you can see that the northern tree's uh, root protection zone is currently falling in where that plot is. 
Um, so some major limbs of the lower canopy of the northern grand tree do conflict with the third level of the proposed structure in lot three here. So um, this, this photo shows the major limbs that are currently in conflict with, um, if we wanted to build really anything over the height of 24 feet um, in, that, in that lot. Um, so um, through our design process, the arborist David Riley um, came and visited the site to evaluate the trees and did determine that um, also considering the major, de the development on the west the south and the southwest of the property, a majority of those trees' root systems is currently in my client's uh, front yard that's currently undisturbed. So another argument that we'd like to make is the more that we can expand that courtyard space of tract A, um, the better off the tree, the tree's root systems will be. Um, this um, further kind of illustrates how much the property of the West is kind of encroaching on the tree's current root protective root radius. Um, so in the Arborist Report, um, on the text on the left here, this is direct excerpt from the Arborist Report. Um, he does um, state that if the building can be moved at least four feet towards Tennessee, a portion of one lead could be retained. Um, the second lead would still have to be removed, but the result is not having to make a 24 inch wound on the trunk of this tree and will lessen the amount of canopy that has to be removed as well. Um, he said that he determined that this pruning should be okay with respect to the health of the tree. And again, the more we can maximize that courtyard space, the better off the tree will be. Um, so this image here, um, we went out, our team went out there and um, mapped out and flagged uh, the proposed structure's footprint if we were to shift lots two and three closer to the street. And we did determine that the shift would allow for us to mitigate harm to the tree. Um, in this image, the limbs circled in green are the ones we'd be able to keep with this variance. And the um, red are the minor limbs that are already really close to a power line and probably would need to be trimmed anyway. Um, and then this, these two images here show um, the um, tree that would hang into that courtyard that right now, the uh, lot three, the south edge of it conflicts with that branch. So that also opens up for that major limb to kind of hang in to, into that courtyard there. Um, so these are some examples of the, um, the current setbacks. This is directly or two lots down and across the street um, from the subject property. Um, and um, we also wanted to point out, uh, according to Florida Statute 163.045, we can proceed with cutting a grand tree if an arborist certifies that it poses a danger to, pr to the property. Um, we really want to avoid this outcome, obviously. Um, we feel that it's in the neighborhood's best interest for the tree to, or for the city to approve this variance request to mitigate damage to the tree's root and limb system as much as possible. Um, given the broad span of the tree's canopy and its presence in the neighborhood, we feel that the four foot decrease in the setback that already has a variance at 18 feet um, will have much less of an impact on the street's current conditions than the absence of this tree if any harm were to be done with it and it didn't survive construction. Um, here are some more images of the uh, property directly east with the shortened setback, as well as the property directly north, um, apartment complex across the street. Um, while we were doing re research on how we can best protect this tree, we also did uh, consult with um, Jonathan Scott and transportation. He did specify that if, a city, if the city decides it's necessary, we could reduce vehicular storage area from the minimum setback from 18 feet to 10 feet. Um, but as you can see on this plan, we have ample parking um, on the site. The existing gravel driveway right here, we plan to keep because it does, we don't want to harm that tree's, uh, it currently falls within the protective radius. So um, between the garage parking, the existing dwelling, um, the uh, structure on lot three will have a uh, garage and driveway and then in lot two has a carport and driveway. Um, all right, and I think that's it. Thank you.
Uh, terrific, thank you. Um, is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak about this petition? Seeing none, are there any questions from the board? Um, are you guys utilizing any like alternative construction methods to further protect the root zone? Like I know sometimes you guys can raise the house a little bit or um, I know there are some. Um, we, that isn't something that we've looked into, but we are still with the project dealing with structural engineers and stuff. It's still very much in a place that if we really needed to, um, I'm not sure it, that does have a cost to it. Um, I think anyone building on this lot, it is plotted for three, three, uh, lots on there. So uh, I think no matter what building on it, um, again, we're trying to mitigate any damage to the tree. Um, the arborist, David Riley, he's worked with the city for a long time, and um, I felt really confident in him. He is very passionate about trees, and I felt very confident with him saying, hey, if you move it four feet, you don't need to take that major limb, it'll be okay. Uh, maybe the way to ask that um, might be to ask Mr. Eister, uh, if you would. Uh, I, I think the way to approach it would be to ask it this way. Um, the, the variance that's being requested um, preserves the majority of this tree and will keep the tree in good health? Yeah, this is Stephen Eiser with Natural Resources. Yes, um, it does. Um, according to the report, um, Dave Riley is one of the self-certified arborists with the city. Um, everything's been verified in his report. So I feel like with this plan, with the gravel driveway already present, um, with the the two limbs being removed, the two smaller limbs, compared to the two large scaffolds, like you're talking 24 inch yeah. cuts. Now they're like probably this size. Um, the trees do have a much better chance. Okay, and, and the city would not require under this plan any alternative construction methods. Yeah. So after it gets past the variance point, if it does Then get you look at that issue. When it gets to the building phase, okay. um, there's all different kinds like air spading may be required along the footers okay. to make sure there's any major roots. Um, pure and lentil footers may be required to kind of bridge over any roots that come across and different things like that. Okay, but that's outside of our preview because that's a permitting not yep. here. Correct. Fair enough, awesome. Any other questions? Yeah, I was just curious, um, when you're in that building um, process, if you are encountering a certain diameter route, are you required to consult the city or an arborist, is that? Yeah, so how it'll go when it goes to the review phase, um, the city arborist will say, hey, we need an air spade along this footer, and they'll call out which footer they want, and then they'll ask for a report, and then based off that report, they'll make any additional recommendations. Okay, any other questions? Seeing none, you have uh, time for rebuttal should you need it. I don't think so. All right, uh, then I will close the public hearing and open it up for a motion from the board, please. I'll do it again. <laughs> it's so exciting. Um, I'll move that the variance request for case VRV, uh, this one, 2243 for the property located at 2510 West Tennessee Avenue. Uh, be granted as depicted on the site plan presented at the public hearing for a reduction of the front setback from 25 feet to 14 feet 5 inches and reduce the vehicular entrance setback from 18 feet to 14 feet 5 inches um, based on the applicants presenting competent and substantial evidence in the record at this public hearing of an, of an unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty when considering the five hardship criteria set forth in section 27-80 of the city code, specifically that with this new construction, there are efforts made to protect a grand tree. And I, I commend you for making those efforts to make it work. And um, I believe that it will fit into uh, the site plan that nicely. Okay, we have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. You opposed? All right. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Have a great Thanks. night.
Jane Maddy Development Coordination. The next case before the board is VRB 2244, and this is addressed at 208 South Albany Avenue. It is zoned RM16. The property owners are Scott Gregory and Erica Johnson, and the variance request is to reduce the front, the rear yard setback from 15 feet to 1.74 feet and the side yard setback from 7 feet to 3.74 feet and this is for an accessory structure and the code section in reference is section 27-290 um, accessory structures with a gross floor area larger than 15 percent of the minimum required lot size must make principal structure setbacks as referenced in section 27-156 uh, this is an aerial showing the um, subject property. It is an interior lot in the central Tampa planning district. Um, this is a site plan that the property owner has provided showing the existing um, accessory structure that um, is going to be taken down and pictures showing the existing conditions of that um, accessory structure. And this is the proposed um, new structure um, maintaining the existing structures of the current uh, accessory structure. However, the, side, um, the staircase has been moved from the west side to the east side. Um, this was reviewed um, by TICO and found consistent. There, uh, the staff memo was attached in the staff reports. Right of way reviewed and has no comments and found them um, inconsistent. Natural resources reviewed and found them consistent with conditions. And um, transportation also found them consistent with conditions. Um, the comments from all the reviewing parties have been attached in the staff report. Um, and they are here to speak to any questions you might have. Um, these are the pictures provided by the applicant showing the subject property again and that accessory structure to the rear. More pictures showing the current structure um, as it exists. This again is going to be replaced by a new structure. In the determination of the variance request before you, the board shall consider section 27-80, the criteria for approving a variance request. And if you have any questions, I'll be available. Thank you, Ms. Madhu. Um, any questions for staff? No? All right, applicant, come on up, state your name, your address, confirm that you've been sworn, and then you'll have 10 minutes. Uh, good evening, Scott Johnson, 208 South Albany. I have been sworn in. Um, I've lived at um, this residence since 1997, uh, 20, 26 years. Um, what this picture shows is just kind of an overhead. There's, I think, six other accessory structures along the alley that meet, um, that have the same setbacks as our structure. Um, basically, what we, what we planned to do was to renovate the existing structure, but due to uh, structural issues, um, we decided it might be more feasible to knock it down and replace it. Um, love the neighborhood and the character and, and the, the bungalow design and so we want to build it back almost exactly the way it is today. The only change we proposed to make was to move the stair away from our neighbor's backyard to the other side to give them more privacy. Um, the existing structure is a little over 100 years old and has just uh, been sinking due to termite damage and settlement over the last 100 years and is currently about seven inches lower on one side than it is on the other. And so we've been, we've been propping it up and adding supports over time. These are just some, some pictures of some of the repairs that we've made. Um, we did consider trying to comply with the primary structure setbacks and move the structure towards the back of the house. So this is the back of the house now if we just took it in place and shifted it. But if we did that, we would be encroaching on the five foot separation between the primary structure and we'd be blocking the bedroom windows on the back of the house. And so I think our request is, is, is very simple. We just want to build back what we have today with the same character that we have today. Um, 
we talked to the neighbors around us who had some questions who didn't understand the request and basically explained to them we just want to put back what's there in the same position. Uh, this is kind of interesting. We got this from the Tampa Library. This is some old photos from, I think, the 1940s that show the, uh, the structure as it was. Kind of neat. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Cool photos. Yeah. Um, all right, is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak about this petition? Seeing none, any questions from the board? Nope, seeing none. You have five minutes for a bubble. I'm good. All right, uh, then I will close the public hearing uh, and open it up for a motion from the board. I'll take a swing of this one. I move that the variance case for VRB 22-44 for property located at 208 South Albany Avenue be granted as depicted on the site plan presented at the public hearing for a reduction in rear yard setback from 15 to 1.74 feet and side yard setback from 7 feet to 3.74 feet, 3 feet uh, based upon the applicant presenting competent and substantial evidence in the record and at this public hearing of an unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty when considering the five hardship criteria set forth in section 27-80 of the city code, specifically that this home was built um, in the early 1900s um, before a lot of this code was existent and that is what's caused this uh, setback issue is to replace an existing structure in the back of the home that is no longer livable uh, due to decay and termites and just age of the, the structure. Okay, we have a motion, is there a second? Second. All right, is there any need for discussion? Hearing none, uh, let's vote. All those in favor say aye. Any opposed? All right. Your motion passes, your petition passes, four to nothing. Thank have you. a great evening. Thank you. Jane Amada Development Coordination. The next case before the board is VRB 22-46. This is addressed at 2610 West Crest Avenue. This is zoned RS50 residential single family. And the property owners are, uh, the property owner is uh, Francisco Garcia Cardoso. And the variance request is to reduce the side yard setback from seven feet to 3.2 feet and the area set back from 20 feet to 3.6 inches for an existing solid roof porch. And the code section in reference, section 27-156, um, and that has the setbacks for the RS50 district, zoning district as 20 feet for the front, 20 for the rear, and seven for the sides. This is the subject property. It is a corner lot in the central Tampa planning district, and it is located at the intersection of West Crest Avenue and Ron Avenue. This was a work without permits, um, and they do have open code um, violations and complaints, and they are here um, looking to get variance in order to fix um, the setback um, issues that they have. This is a uh, site plan that has been provided by the applicant um, showing the existing residence and the attachment in the rear, which is the um, porch, the cover right here at the rear. That is um, what they, the variance that they're here for, um, looking to get that site set back at, at, the, at the east corner and also at the rear. Um, previously, they had um, the entire site paved. However, they have um, removed some of the pavement in order to meet with the green space requirement. Um, this was reviewed by Natural Resources, Transportation, and Right of Way and found consistent. Natural Resources um, found them consistent with conditions that they meet the landscape requirements at the time of permitting. Um, 
we have received no letters of support. There was one letter of objection um, that staff received. Um, the memo from Natural Resources was attached as well to the staff report. These are pictures that the applicant has provided showing that solid roof porch as it currently exists. And the picture, the image to the right is actually showing the side yard um, setback as it currently exists. In the determination of the variance request before you, the board shall consider section 27-80 as the criteria for approving a variance. And staff would be available if you have any questions. Uh, uh, staff is gonna add that this um, applicant um, is going to require a translator or an interpreter. So um, we would. Um, the letter of opposition, um, I don't see that in the packet. Is that, was that included in the packet or am I just missing it? That might have been my oversight. I don't think that there, there was no letter of objection. That oh, there's no oversight. letter of objection. No. Okay. No. All right. Thank you for clarifying. All right. Uh, applicant um, will need to state his name, his address, and confirm that he has been sworn. And then he'll have 10 minutes to make a presentation explaining the hardships and why you need to uh, do what you've done. Buenas noches, mi nombre es Francisco García. Good evening, my name is Francisco García. Y vengo en representación además de mi esposa. I also am here mm. representing myself and my wife. Somos propietarios de la uh, casa situada en... We are the owners. At 2610 West Crest Avenue. Of the home located at 2610 West Crest Avenue. Tampa, Florida, 3314. Tampa, Florida, 33614. Eh, primero que todo queremos agradecerle a la audiencia por darnos la oportunidad de traer esta petición, a la señora Jane también. We are, uh, thank you for allowing us to uh, present here today at this hearing. Uh, confirm. Estoy aquí usted. Yes. Sí, juro. Yes. Okay. All right. So, Ten minutes. Uh, Diez minutos tiene. Okay. Eh, el objetivo de nuestra petición es eh, The objective of our petition is to seek a es para mantener la permanencia de este cover que nosotros construimos. Is to um, allow the current porch to remain there as is. Eh, que lo construimos con el objetivo de, de mantener el, el área que no se inundara y que no se mojara de la lluvia. We uh, build it with the purpose to make sure that the area would not be flooded. El, eh, para eso estamos pidiendo una For this reason we're asking que se que se cambien los códigos los setbacks that uh, the uh, setbacks will be allowed to be modified los setbacks que nosotros pedimos fueron corregidos eh, después no, no son los que están presentando aquí ahora um, uh, there needs to be a correction from the original setbacks that were presented earlier and the setbacks are different. So there needs to be a clarification. Quiere decirle? Sí. Uh, ahora, no sé cómo decirlo en inglés. En Tranquilo. español se lo voy a decir en inglés. <laughs> so, <laughs> tenemos no, unos no, nuevos setbacks. So, we have new um, setbacks numbers from the original numbers that the lady presented. El rear yard setback. The rear yard setback de 20 pies a 3.6. From 20 feet to 3.6 feet. El side yard setback oeste. The side yard setback on the west. Desde 7 a 6.8 eh, pies. From 7 feet to 6.8 feet. Y el side yard de la parte este desde 7 a 1.7. And the side yard setback on the east from seven feet to 1.7 feet. Okay, can I stop you there for a second? Um, we, we may have a notice issue. Okay, all right, let's address that. 
esta situación. Susan Johnson Velez, Legal Department. Um, based on the staff report I have, there was only one side yard setback that was noticed, and then Correct. the rear yard setback. So what he's asking for now is a greater variance than what was. Obviously, we cannot grant what has not been noticed. Correct. Um, do we know which uh, side yard setback was noticed? Was that the east or the west side? So the east side. The east side was noticed uh, to 3.2? Correct. Okay. And so we cannot grant to one point um, whatever is being requested. Right. Um, so if, if you will explain that uh, we have no ability to grant this evening anything beyond what was previously noticed which would be um, only the one yard, the one side yard setback, which was seven feet to uh, 3.2, which was noticed, and the other one was not noticed at all. But we corrected that more than a month ago with the Department of the Variance. We, we have the letter here. And we have the letter here that shows. Okay, well, if you can show that to. Ms. Um, Madhu, we can talk about it. Was uh, did you have a sign posted that showed the two side yard setbacks? Okay. Do you have a photo of that sign showing the posting of the two side? It is on the application. It is on the petition. I will look through the petition materials and see if it's there. You know which one it is? <laughs> That's not a photo, right? Yeah. I don't see it. It's a picture of it. Oh, there's the, there's the photo. Here it is. Oh, yeah, that's not the way it's painted. No, they said no. No, can I see that? Okay, so did you give it to Eileen or who, who, who received it? I give it to you. Who? The what? documents? Yeah. yeah. And you give it to me back. What was posted in the cell, I guess, is the only question, right? Because that's where the notice. Right. Um, I do have. Um, can't see this, but I can't read it. It's, I mean, it's there, but it's it, when you blow it up, it's just garbled. So whatever the new one was, I don't have it. Is it signed here? Yes. I have such two. It is signed. <coughs> it is signed. Yes. So yeah, and what, what, are, what are the dates on this? The certificate of mailing? Um, March 30th. Yeah, so, so Susan Johnson led legal department, so and, and Jane can let you know, but it looks like the only letter that we have on file 
does not include that second side yard setback. Uh, yeah, we're so what, what, I, what I would recommend because he, he says, and I do see a picture for a sign with the new information, but I don't have documentation for that. So, and again, because this is a translation issue, sometimes I work with staff at the office. So I would say, I would request if the applicant is um, okay with that, that we continue this case and we see if we do have that information. Actually, yeah, I, I, we, I mean, we can't grant something that we can't confirm has been noticed properly. Um, so if, if they want to proceed with those numbers, then I don't see any choice but to move this to uh, a, a subsequent hearing date. He's still in front of me. That's what I'm saying. We, we cannot confirm, cannot confirm the good notice letters. We cannot confirm the other information. So without that, we just have to continue it. Do you need a motion for this, or is this an automatic continuance? Um, so if staff can confirm that he does have the right documentation, then this would be an automatic continuance to June. Okay. If we're unable to, then he would have to renew this. Uh, well, I'm having her ask the applicant whether he would prefer June or July just okay. because if he has to re-notice it gives right. him more time. July gives different. him more time right. to do that. Just in case. I mean, if he, okay. if everything's fine, then June is fine, but sure. otherwise he only has two days to, yeah. And to, to be fair to them, there are no fine, they, while they're in the process, Fines are stayed, everything is stayed. Correct. So in terms of, they, they should be aware in terms of the hardship. It just means that they, I mean, they're gonna have to come back anyway. So might as well take the additional time. So continue from June. We need to check to make sure that we have the documentation because right now we don't have it. That's what I was going to say. So why don't we just make a motion? So you see, this is the only one. Why don't we just make a motion? This one, which is March 30th, which matches the date, which is different from this one. So this one, I don't have it. Did you give it to me? Did you give it to me? It doesn't matter. The power, the power I'm, I'm saying that yes, but I, I, I don't have the And then we send the letters again to, to the, so the neighborhood. So when we send the yeah. new letters, mm -hmm. you still have to provide all of this again. Really? That's it? That's for the new letter. That you, that's, yeah. that's why you're claiming you're just getting June. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, we, before, uh, we, uh, when? Yeah, when, when we, when we, we got to change this one, we send a letter one more time. Yeah. Yes. Have a date. So the, the second one you sent, uh -huh. you still need to submit those evidence just like this to us. Right. So we, we, we need to still receive everything that you submitted the first time again. It sounds like they need to re notice. Yes. It sounds like they're going to have to send a notice again. So even though we gave you this, you, and you sent it out. You sent the, the letter two times. Yes, but the second time you sent it out, you didn't provide that documentation to us. So we need that documentation. To make sure that you properly right. noticed. Right, right. So in the next two days. No, I think they should. Well, I mean, it's up to you, but you have to get it done by, what, what is the date for the June 14th hearing? So the, you have a choice. The fifth. Okay. Mm -hmm. One, you could do this for June. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do this for June, that means between Wednesday and Sunday, mm -hmm. you have to do this. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. If you don't want, if you want more time, then we push it to the next. So what uh, we have to do, just uh, read up the, the recent, the, a confirmation that we sent all the letters to you? Give right. it to you? Right. Because we send the letters again? Yes.
because we don't have any proof again. that this was the mail. Just do you want to continue to June or July? So, so do you want to do it June or July? If we do July, how, how, how much time do we have to do the whole process? Five weeks. weeks. Yeah. Five, five weeks if you do July. All right. We'll, we'll take July. July. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. July. Yes. So they, they would they would continue to July because even though they they came into the office and they did notice and they did not provide that documentation to staff. So we don't have proof of that. So they would be required to re-notice. So uh, do you, is it an automatic extension? Or do you, would you prefer, is it easier to just have a motion for July? Okay. Um, let's, you want to come back on? Oh, okay. If anyone's parked in the city council member's spot, you might want to move your car because they're going to tow it. Um, uh, oh, Steve. <laughs> All right. Uh, do we have a motion to continue to the July? What's the July date? Second. I move that the variance request for case BRB 22-46 for property located at 2610 West Crest Avenue for a reduction of the side yard setback and rear yard setback um, be continued until Tuesday, July 12th at 5.30 uh, for the public hearing. Good motion. Is there a second? Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. You're, you're being continued. We'll see you in July. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, BRB So the next case before the board is BRB 22-47, and this is addressed at 2404 North Ridgewood Avenue, zoned RS60, residential single family. The property owner is Elizabeth, Elizabeth Hedman, and the variance request is to increase the accessory structure height from 15 feet to 22 feet and six inches. And this is in order to construct a two-story accessory structure and the code section in reference is section 27-290. Accessory structure shall not exceed 15 feet in height. And this is um, an aerial showing that subject property. It is an interior lot in the Central Tampa Planning District. Um, this is a site plan showing the existing property, um, the house and the proposed accessory structure. This was reviewed by natural resources and found inconsistent um, with technical standards and code and they have a memo that was attached to the staff report. It was also reviewed by transportation and found consistent and right of way found them consistent as well. Uh, this is um, a proposed um, floor plan for the accessory structure that the applicant has provided showing the garage on the first level and um, guest room on the second level. Um, we did receive one letter of um, objection and it was included in the staff report. Um, we have received no letters of support at this time and in the determination of the variance request before you, the board shall consider section 27-80 for the approval of the variance request, and staff will be available if you have any questions. Okay. Um, I see the memo. Can, um, uh, oh, well, Mr. Eister. Oh, he's back. I'm back. You're I don't know who said it. Was it Tony? 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 I don't know. Oh, they're cutting trees. The tree service actually, James, uh, over your car. Oh, okay. And whoever has a white Toyota that's next to that one. <laughs> um, so it's the, the black Nissan and the white four-door? 
that's funny that the, it's kind um, of ironic that the treat show was scared uh, you, Excuse right? me while I move my arm. Okay, all right. Um, Mr. Eister, while you're here, can you give us a quick rundown of your memo on, uh, yeah, so on this a lot, property? Uh, Stephen Eister, Natural Resources. For my memo, a lot of the comments are generated because of the, let's see if I can The off-site tree. The off-site grand tree. Um, the building is out of the protective radius, so really just the stairs need to be shifted forwards closer to the pool. Okay. Um, I think with the layout that they currently have, I think that's pretty easily done. They'll just flip where the bathroom and the closet are, and they should be able to provide that space. Okay. All if right. not, they can shift the building forwards, but that creates some more like eve to eve issues and things like that. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. All right, uh, petitioner, come on up, state your name, your address, confirm that you've been sworn, and you'll have 10 minutes. Uh, Ralph Schuler, 2401 North Howard Avenue. I have not been sworn. Okay. If there's anyone else who has not been sworn this evening, uh, and if there's a possibility that you might speak, even a slight chance, <laughs> stand up, let's swear you in. I will. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, so now you can confirm you've been sworn? I have. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Awesome. You have 10 minutes uh, to explain your hardships. Uh huh. Thank you. Um, so, pretty stri simple, straightforward project. Uh, this, this project, Grand Lake has no garage. We want to build a garage. The garage um, in RM, uh, I'm sorry, in RS60 allows for 900 square feet. Um, we can't build 900 square feet here for a couple reasons. Of course, we have a, a grand tree on the on the uh, adjacent property uh, to the north. Um, so we've we've set the building outside of that. We were proposing one column to support a column in 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 that protective radius. We would either air spade it and if it wouldn't wouldn't work. We would then move move it. So we we will work with natural resources to resolve that issue as required. Um, so what we're trying to do, you know, uh, I see it's still up, but um, I'll put my version up. So I can point to it. They go to Elmo. Uh, is there a button we can push to uh, switch that? <laughs> I think it's uh, here, right? Yeah, Miss Madhu usually pushes the button, but she's running she to check her side. car. So. Yeah. Mm, no, no. Here comes here comes the tech folks. Yep. Maybe I think that's it. Oh, uh, you got yep, it. There we go. You got it. That's you got it. it. Good Perfect. job. Thank you very much. Nice work. So we're trying to nestle this yes between some eve to eve issues. We're bringing it as far forward as as possible, and, and there's, this is an existing drive now. There used to be some time ago. I don't know when a an a accessory structure previously. There is a slab that's still there in the back corner. Um, that was demolished some time ago. Now we're going to bring a new ex this new accessory structure forward to protect this tree, of course, these two trees here. Um, and then this is an alley, but there's a, quite a bit of grade between here and this alley because going this, this direction is the river. We're about a block and a half from the river. So um, what we're tr asking for is, is, is to just build an accessory structure of what's allowed up to 900 square feet but but make it a two-story instead of a one-story structure which would go from 15 to 22 and a half feet there are many other structures within this neighborhood both historical and new that that also are two-story which um <clears throat> we have a quick quick elmo here uh this is our our structure uh, our sorry our property line here our property the adjacent neighbor just to the south has a two-story accessory structure one on the alley has a two-story accessory structure, and then these are all other accessory structures. This one and this one, which are which were PD'd, both have brand new accessory structures of similar size and scale within the neighborhood. So it's completely compatible to what we're doing. This is one of those accessory structures currently being built, very almost identical in size and scale. This is the alley looking looking south. This is the accessory structure to the south of the alley. Our pro subject property is about one, one lot 
further down in, on, the, on the left side. This is the tree in question here. This is the accessory structure next door neighbor. And that's that alley now looking the other direction. And that was that accessory structure that I previously amended to. This is approximately where the accessory structure was on the alley. Um, but ours would be further to the, to the east. Looked in another picture. Where this furniture is, is a slab. That is where the excess structure previously used to be. And again, we're look, looking to move that stru structure away from the tree, away from the, uh, from the alley. You can see the significant grade change between the alley and, and, and the property. Brand new house, just got completed. Similar accessory structure about two blocks away. This is the next door neighbor to the south with, again, two story accessory structure. This is a grand tree just to the, to, to the east of the property. So that's that, the tree in question. This is a tree we're gonna try and put the, our nestle between those two, those two big trees to make it work. So <clears throat> I believe there was one, one opposition. Um, I, I spoke um, to that neighbor significantly. Her concerns, I think, were mainly about stormwater concerns, not necessarily about our, our, our second story accessory structure. Uh, in doing this, of course, we will gutter and, and try and get as much water to, to, towards Ridgewood as possible, but the historic flow, of course, of the entire neighborhood flows water from towards the river, natural flow. Um, and then this, this alley does, does take water and, and direct it in, in both directions, both north and south. But you know, like 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 everything in Florida, water is going to go where it go. But we would not uh, disturb any of any of the natural flow. If anything, improve it by again re reducing the amount of of, uh, of impervious area, especially closer to the to the south part of the of the lot, and then move, try and divert as much water back back to the to Ridgewood Avenue as possible. So, our state sh stated hardships. Are pretty straightforward. We have s several large trees that we're trying to work around. We're, we're uh, consistent within the neighborhood itself um, on this block and at large with uh, other accessory structures. This this building, the original house was built in around 1925. Um, we're not allow asking for anything additional over a, a normal accessory structure size, which is a 15% um, per the per the lot which would be 900 square feet. Um, so with that, I think we, we uh, meet the burden of hardship and uh, happy to take any questions. Okay, uh, that concludes your presentation. Uh, is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak about this petition this evening? All right, seeing none, any questions uh, from the board? Um, yeah, so I just um, wanna make sure that I'm understanding um, sort of what's happening here and that is that you, know, you could have made this a one-story structure but you would run into tree problems you would run into setback problems so instead of going wider you went up exactly okay um, the neighbor to your north is that the neighbor that you spoke with the neighbor is to adjacent to the south Okay, so south it's and west. on the other side of the uh, on the other side of the, the alley, alley. Correct. They're the one who wrote the letter. Mm -hmm. Have you spoken to the neighbor um, uh, directly to the north of you, the one next door? Uh, to you? I talked to several people who called me. I don't remember specifically who was who, but once I explained what was going on, they obviously didn't have any issues with it. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Um, the city forester is recommending that the stairway be moved a little bit south. Would you be opposed to doing that as part of a condition so you wouldn't have to disturb the tree branches? So, so I have several ideas on exactly how to deal with that. Of course, we'd prefer this solution if if we can air spade it and find that a single column works within that. I've worked with, with natural resources previously. To, I mean, that sometimes that works. If it doesn't work and the air spading shows that it doesn't, I'm, I'm sorry, I was relating to the, I think it was the branching that was, that was a concern, or maybe not. <laughs> I think it's the roots, right? Yeah. yeah. It's more of a, just a Stephen Nice to Natural Resources, more just that the stairway was in the protective radius, 
if at the time of construction, um, building may make them redesign it. Like they're saying, if they do an air spade and they find significant roots, sure. building may make them move it conditionally. Um, I just wanted to make you guys aware beforehand. Right. And if we could do any of those redesigns up front to make the processes easier as they go. So, so the variant we're requesting doesn't technically have to address that. What I have an alternative solution here, but again, if at the time of permitting we'd work with natural resources and, and, and the building department to come up with an acceptable solution. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none, you have uh, five minutes for rebuttal uh, if you need it. Um, no, I just think this is uh, consistent within the neighborhood and, and, and it could be a benefit to, to, to not, not only uh, my client, but, but, but the uh, block at large and I'm looking forward to uh, your support. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, I will close the public hearing and open it up for a motion from the board. I move that variance request for a case VRB 22-47 for the property located at 2404 North Ridgewood Avenue be granted as depicted on the site plan presented at the public hearing for an increase in accessory structure height from 15 feet to 22 feet 6 inches uh, based upon applicant presenting competent and substantial evidence in the record and at this public hearing of a necessary hardship or practical difficulty when considering the five hardship criteria set forth in section 27-80 of the city code, specifically that the uh, property has grand trees affecting the location of this uh, garage accessory structure. And instead of making a larger single story structure, they're attempting to go two stories to save these grand trees, which is great. And um, they are not causing any other uh, health or safety welfare issues for the neighborhood and it will be in harmony with the consistent, consistent and in harmony with the neighborhood as it currently sits. We have a motion, is there a second? Second. All right. Excuse we, me. Yes, ma'am. Susan Johnson, Leslie Gilbert. Did you want, I wanted to ask Stephen, if, did you want to add a condition about the stairs to make sure that it's outside of the? Uh, it didn't sound like a condition was necessary. Um, it, did, it says it showed on the site plan though. The motion said it's shown on the site plan, which is, I think, I don't know. I just wanted to make sure that the motion was. Um, I'm okay, Stephen Eisen, Natural Resources. I'm okay with the motion. I think a building during permitting, if anything needs to be adjusted, they'll make a move the stairs because the stairs are not impacting any of the setbacks. So I don't think. Okay. I think right. It's it's only the height. It, okay. It's a fair. I appreciate that, but think it through. Yeah, you're right. Okay. All right. So we have a motion and a second. Um, <clears throat> all those in favor, say aye. Any opposed? You're approved, four to nothing. <laughs> Have a great evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> all right. Is your car all safe, Ms. Madhu? The next case before the board is VRB 2248, addressed at 804 South Bayside Drive. This is zoned RS75, and the property owner is Catherine Markham, and um, the variance request is to reduce the rear yard setback from 20 feet to 11 feet, and the side yard setback from 7 feet to 5 feet for an accessory structure. And the code section in reference here 
is section 27-290, accessory structures with a gross floor area greater than 15% of the minimum required lot size must meet principal structure setbacks. I have provided updated site plans um, that the applicant provided to us, um, a letter of support that came in, and the average report that the applicant also provided. This is all new uh, information that was not included in the staff report. This is the subject property. It is um, an interior lot in the South Tampa Planning um, District. This um, currently has um, an active um, building permit pending the variance application. And this is the site plan showing um, the subject property and the accessory structure that is being um, proposed with the setbacks, uh, reducing that setback because it's, it's greater than um, what will be allowed by right. So they are required to meet principal structure setbacks and requesting a variance for that. This was reviewed by Natural Resources and they initially found it inconsistent. However, with the updated site plan and average report, um, Natural Resources has found them consistent with conditions that the grand tree is actually a 29 inch tree, so it's not a grand tree and um, it's of C8 quality, so um, it would have to be mitigated. And the tree um, is shared, but it can be removed with the neighbor's approval. So that tree that's towards the south end of the property is not a grand tree as initially um, um, assessed. This was reviewed by right away and found inconsistent with the comments that there is uh, an easement, a three foot easement in the rear of the property that could pot potentially affect um, this project. The easement, however, is not um, to the city, but to the developer of the plat. And um, that it appears that Tico may be within this area. And she has provided um, a, a copy of that um, document, which was attached to the staff report. Transportation reviewed and found it consistent. Um, we received no letters of objection for this um, application. These are the four plans as provided by the applicant showing um, the first floor level and the second floor level as well. Elevations of the proposed structure. Um, in the determination of this variance um, request before the board, we shall consider section 27-80 as the criteria for approving a variance request. If you do have any questions, staff is available on hand. Okay, uh, if the applicant is here, come on up, state your name, your address, confirm that you've been sworn, and then you'll have 10 minutes to present to us your hardships. Hoping for the best with technology here today, but hi, my name is Zachary Pease with Ultra Custom Group. Uh, my office address is at 5401 Southdale Mabry. I'm here on behalf of Catherine Markham, who purchased this uh, purchased this home several years ago. Yes. Confirm you've been sworn. I have. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, she bought this home several years ago and undertook a pretty substantial renovation to what is a hundred year old house. Some of the hardships uh, that we've encountered basically when we were tasked with the designing of like a complete outdoor living space. Uh, she wanted a living space, you know, first floor and entertainment area for adults and of course a game room and rec room above along with some, uh, along with a three car parking situation. There was an existing accessory structure used as a garage, but it was fairly dilapidated when we got to the project. We were asked to basically redesign that while using their existing um, pool area. You know, the pool was, although in need of renovation, still suitable and located in an appropriate area. 
Uh, my design team went about drafting several different designs and trying to make this space work with all the aspects that they were looking for. However, we ran into several issues when trying to obtain the gross space required to kind of hit a three car garage as well as you know the outdoor living space that she was looking to obtain along with the living quarters on the first floor along with the game room on the second you know um, so due to these kind of constraints we were not able to push this to all the way to the rear or all the way to the side as typical with accessory structures I believe in this zoning district those side and rear setbacks are more like three rear three side um, given the gross size of this structure um, you know we were kind of playing with different ideas of how we would move that structure off the rear setback or, or, or even maintain the setbacks of the main dwelling but due to the orientation of the driveway that exists and the swimming pool that exists which basically to kind of orientate you with the driveway if you go down the right side of the property and head down, you drive down at what is a very long driveway all the way to the back, kind of letting out into the rear, of which the main dwelling and the property are about 11 foot from one another, but there is like very dense um, vegetation that grows down the common property line there. So in other words, you know, what I'm really trying to say is the driveway is where the driveway is, the pool is where the pool is, and the <coughs> rear property line that basically has kind of like a 22 degree in nature kind of its shape along the back kind of prevents us from really having, you know, anything to work with as far as appropriating those sorts of aspects, you know, to, to the rear project, you know, due to limitations with like turning turning car radiuses and, and things of that nature, you know, that we were forced with kind of designing this such that the garage went as far back as could be without causing or, or with causing minimal ab, um, uh, impact to the, to the rear um, utilities and whatnot, which is what we've done. And then we've also staggered the structure to kind of move in line with that. So if you were to kind of look at the plans, you'll see that our greatest conflict with the rear setback is 11 foot and it's really only in areas of the rear and I was hoping I would be able to kind of articulate this better with this program if there's any way to kind of oh take some of that glare off but if you kind of I don't know can you see this guys yeah so but that kinda, glare that glare is yeah, right I know, it's brutal I, that I, hasn't I, been an issue it's it must be because of the coloration yeah. of your screen maybe i could oh well because you've got it's a it's just the laptop the reflecting on. is what's happening there but, you go. i mean basically if i if i change the if you slide it down that might help let me try to adjust the slide it towards you i think this is good you're you're going to want to see this <laughs> so if i invert this color you'll see the footprint of the structure that i'm proposing and basically what i'm trying to articulate here is You've got 11 foot off the rear property, but as it, it as it heads to the west of the property line, those increase, you know? So at its worst point, it's 11 foot from the rear property line, but at its best, it can be closer to 14, 15 in some cases. But because of kind of the nature of this property line and how it's orientated and when you're squaring an accessory structure up to a dwelling that's placed square on that property you run into these where essentially your constraints become either diminishing or increasing depending on the direction that you're going and that's one of the hardships that we're dealing with here you know that coupled with the fact that you know the driveway has a sensible location like I said this is over a hundred year old house so this existed obviously I you know for its lot size which is close to 18,000 square foot which is you know almost three times the size of the lot size to which the minimum standard of an accessory structure is being kind of you know um, used as you know um, you know it just happens to be that this structure is orientated in some cases 60 feet from the front property line in some cases greater you know leaving a lesser balance to kind of work with here in the back I mean, although the property is large, you know, it was bought with the intention of being large and being able to use, you know, this space to achieve something like a detached garage and, you know, an outdoor living space that works nicely with the pool itself. So 
Um, stated hardships are, you know, pretty much as follows. Yes, we have a utility easement that's going here down the side. That, that basically impacts the use of an actual rear setback um, for use of an actual accessory structure, the meeting of the, you know, most needs of uh, traditional accessory structure, which would be a side yard setback of three and a rear yard setback in three. However, that's unable to be obtained with this utility easement. So inherently we have to push the structure forward in doing so you know, in doing so, there's no chance of really detaching one of these structures from another in order to classify one as an accessory structure by traditional standards and the other meeting of the main setback dwellings. It kind of is like an all-in-one deal that we feel like the best balance is achieved when you combine those things but minimize the, Im Im the impacts on both the rear and the side, you know. So we are meeting of the main dwelling setback here on the right side, and we are, you know, we are um, asking for a two-foot relief on the back, and we are asking for what is essentially a nine-foot relief at its closest points. You know, this again, the the need for this diminishes in the impact that it has on things like the property behind it tend to diminish as well as the property line you know, depending on which direction you go in, but at its worst, it is, you know, 11 foot, which is nine foot off, so. Okay, uh, does that complete your presentation? I think so. All right, uh, is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak about this petition this evening? Seeing none, any questions from the board? Ms. Johnson. I have a question. Um, I am following your reason for the rear setback, but I'm not convinced of the five foot um, setback reduction from seven to five foot, um, especially since this end of the lot is not pie shaped. Um, what were your reasons for needing that reduction of two feet? Uh so the reduction of two feet, which would be on the west side of the property line, is really more or less for the maintenance of the existing vegetation that's there. As I said, along that common property line, there is a thick, thickly planted fishtail palms and privacy down that border. So in order to kind of build this structure and leave that vegetation in place, I would need to relieve that extra two foot. Otherwise, I'd have to remove the vegetation that's there. But I'm saying the um, the setback oh. requirement is seven feet. Okay, so versus going you, to the three foot. Okay, so we're maintaining five in an effort to leave the vegetation there. We're not. We've asked for that in lieu of seven, which would be the main dwelling, in order to have the distance across in order to fit three cars there. So a three car garage requires this thirty three foot nine as a minimum. And to clarify, you know, if this had been a detached accessory structure, the setbacks would be three feet. Is that correct? Okay. As a detached accessory structure, the setback would be three side, three rear, um, but it would also require an eve to eve separation, you know, for it to be classified such. That's kind of why we saw as it best to kind of combine it into one thing and, and kind of minimize or minimize its impact or any one aspect of the structure's impact on, on you know, rear and side. Um, I mean, on, on the east side of the property, looks like there's nine feet, three inches. Is there any possibility of shifting the building over the two feet and then you have seven and seven and all you're looking for is a variance on the rear? So nine foot three on, on that side, correct. On this side, right now, uh, we we're seven foot, yeah. which maintains right the seven. side. So there's, there's very, I mean, there's the opportunity to move it forward and over as it's kind of has the same thing going on with the side. As you push forward, you gain distance east and west. But the issue comes down to right here. When it comes to pulling a car in here and pulling a car out 
and alleviating the need to back down what is a hundred and a hundred plus foot driveway every time that you leave your garage you know the turnable radius that's needed in order for one to back up out of that garage and just proceed forward down that long highly vegetated you know corridor that is an existing driveway becomes quite difficult so our goal was to you know move this such that there's a sufficient turn radius for a car to pull into its garage on its way in but back out of its garage turn and proceed out to the right away from there and that's where some of these restrictions if you were to kind of hopefully i'm not making you dizzy but if i was to take 20 foot off the mean area of this that becomes the starting point of your garage leaving very little left in order to actually and we've we've played with this in every possible way to come up with a solution than that and there's just we felt that none greater than the one here I see the the issue with the three car garage and the parking um, and that dimension needs to stay that dimension obviously for just vehicle requirements and but if you were to shift that down two feet um, and then that would maybe affect the other structure um, would you be willing to modify that structure uh, I I'm sure that I'm sure my clients would be willing to modify the structure if for there if there was any you know a significant kind of gain in this you know for them and it didn't I mean we are truly down to feet here as designers as far as turning radiuses and accomplishing this we are down to every foot in what is our you know strongest foot forward as far as a sensible plan that kind of meets all the people involved i mean we are considerate of jack the rear neighbor we are considerate of the side neighbor all of which have expressed support for this based on how it's designed and i mean what we're trying to avoid is a scenario that is is really kind of has less of the historic nature of the house itself and has a greater impact on the surrounding properties so I mean, this could be, you know, one design that was proposed to me is we could just basically stilt the house and build a three car or build a three story in this, you know, and all the cars could park underneath. Well, you know, obviously that's, you know, although it meets the side and the rear setback of the main dwelling, it becomes a greater impact to the aesthetic of the surrounding properties and as well as the aesthetic of my client's property, you know. So what they're looking to do is, you know, build themselves something that, you know, has the sentiment of the, of the historic house that they built, you know, and so you know, do the, it in a tasteful you know, the, the kind of The setback is seven foot, and I need to know why are you, you are were you so able? close to meeting that but didn't. Um, I, I mean, really what it came down to, <laughs> uh, so what it really came down to was just that, you know, we want to be able to fit what is a minimum like a minimum three car garage you'll notice this isn't a two car with a single car garage this is an actual three car garage door because there is simply no room to do a two car with a single car because the petition of block in between them will basically exceed that of being able to actually work so I mean, we're not trying to use up all the space of this lot on the grounds that we're, hard, we're not even using up two thirds of it with the whole project. It's just the way everything is orientated creates, you know, s serious limitations as to how one is able to maneuver a car in and out of that and deal with, you know, and, you know, if you want your driveway on the right side of this property where it is and has always been, and you want you know a car then there's there's just these are kind of the the impacts that are inherent in that and we're we, we are truly trying to do this in a minimally evasive way that you know that kind of satisfies what the clients are looking for and you know i mean going with what you're saying about staying with the historical home i don't know very many historical homes that have three car garages uh, true but this it's would the, be the first historical home i've ever seen with a three car that, garage true uh but it is it's more or less the aesthetic that we're looking to achieve so if this was a three-story building with you know with a with 
parking on the first floor that you would drive into that would meet the that would meet this you know rear setback and allow for rooms for you know vehicles to turn around and you know be a per permittable structure but frankly wouldn't look this wouldn't look like this you know i mean this this is an existing balcony this is an existing balcony or this is the balcony proposed you know we want the sentiment of this house to be exhibited in the accessory structure we're building and that's more what i was referring to it's a modernized version of a hundred year old house There's right no but i mean what i was just it. getting at is you know you can have this beautiful thing and maybe have two and a half cars and not have to reduce your side well, setback what do you I mean, do i understand i understand what you're going but my point was Understood. not everybody not everybody gets a three-car garage yeah well taken aaron but there's they don't make half cars either so it's you know but it's perfect for your bike or your unused uh treadmill yeah. or whatever yeah well again in in just trying to get with the wish list that my client brings to me you know the, this was on the wish list the third car was important um, you know, to, to obtain this. And, you know, I, I try to find the balance that best achieves that, but satisfies, you know, the interest of the community, you know. Would you be open to a condition where we would approve the rear, but not the side yard? And it's up to you to be able to make up what you need to make up yes. with that to make I it would. work? Any other questions from the board? All right. Uh, you have five minutes for rebuttal. Just, uh, no, I think I'm good with what's been said. Okay. Uh, then I will close the public hearing and open it up for motion from the board. Um, I have a question for legal. Based on the discussion that we're having, it sounds like um, a bifurcated motion might make sense here, um, as opposed to a motion with a condition. Susan Johnson from Les Legal Department. Yes, that sounds like it would, if you're wanting to grant one but deny another, I would um, suggest two, okay. two separate motions, just for clarity's sake. Okay. Um, if any all right, so who would like to make the motion uh, with that understanding? Uh, I can make it, but I have a question about it. Okay. <laughs> so, so, what, what, so do I um, do it with the condition? Or no. So what, the what they're suggesting would be a motion to, uh, you do two motions. The first motion would be to approve the, um, the rear yard setback from 20 to 11. Period. Okay, and the don't, don't acknowledge the other one. The okay. second motion would be, if you did not want to approve it, you would move to, de to deny the uh, seven to five, and then okay. we could vote on that if you're going to make the motion. But then you would have to modify... Um, Granted, as depicted on the site plan, that's not quite true. We are, no, because you're are just, you're only making, your four. first motion is for the rear yard setback from okay. 20 to 11. Got it. To construct an accessory structure, yada, yada. Okay. It, not, not talking about not the talking side about yard setback. Okay. And then the second motion would be approve or deny the side yard setback. Okay, I'm going to go for it. All right. <laughs> I move that the variance request for case VRB. 22-48 for a property located at 804 South Bayside Drive uh, be granted as depicted on the site plan presented at the public hearing for a reduction of the rear yard setback from 20 feet to 11 feet based on the applicant presenting competent and substantial evidence in the record and at this public hearing of an unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty when considering the five hardship criteria set forth in section 27-80 of the city code. Specifically that uh, this is a pie shaped lot which um, kind of restricts the rear use of a dwelling, accessory dwelling unit and there is present uh, you 
utility easement as well. Um, so if it was a detached, you wouldn't be able to get that close to it anyway. Um, that's that. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Second. All right, so we have a motion to approve the rear yard setback from 20 to 11 <clears throat> and a second. All those in favor say aye. Supposed? No? All right. The rear yard setback passes four to zero. And what would you like to do with the side yard setback? So I move that the variance request for case <clears throat> VRB 2248 for the property located at 804 South Bayside Drive for a uh, reduction from seven to five feet be denied due to the failure of the petitioner to meet its burden of proof to provide competent and substantial evidence in the record and it's at this public hearing for an unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty when considering the five hardship criteria as set forth in section 2780 of the city code specifically that it was a self-created hardship on that side. Reduction of the side yard setback from seven feet to five feet. Okay. All right, we have a motion to deny the side yard setback. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, so we have a motion <clears throat> to deny and a second. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed? All right. Um, so uh, your rear yard setback was approved. Your side yard setback from seven to five was denied, meaning that you gotta meet side yard setbacks. Uh, if you should choose to appeal, uh, you can always appeal to the city council on the uh, denied portion. Um, and other okay. than that, have a great evening. Oh, I think I'm gonna see you again. Yeah. Oh yeah, other than that, have a great evening until we see you again in- the next day. 90 seconds. <laughs> and I've been sworn in. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The next case before the board is VRB 2249. This is addressed at 4713 West Neptune Street. This is zoned RS75 residential single <clears throat> family. The property owner are the property owners are David and Kimberly Monicello. And the variance request before the board tonight is to reduce the corner yard setback from 15 feet to 10.3 feet for a pole. And the code section in reference is section 27-290.3 in ground swimming pools shall be located no closer to the corner lot line than the corner yard setback. This is the subject property. It is located in the South Tampa Planning District. It's a corner lot at the intersection of West Neptune Street and Southwest Shore Boulevard. And um, it's highlighted there in orange. This is the site plan that the applicant has shown, has provided showing um, the proposed pool and the setbacks um, that are proposed for this pool. And as the code says, that they have to meet that um, corner lot um, line, corner setback. At this point, they are at 10 feet and 3, 10.3 um, feet, and they are required to be at seven, at, at um, 15, I apologize. Um, this was reviewed by right away, um, and it was found um, consistent with um, comment that they appear to be outside a 7.5 foot platted utility easement um, on the north side of the property, so they are in the clear. Uh, Natural Resources reviewed this and found it inconsistent with technical codes and standards and the comment that the pool shall be a minimum of 17 feet away from the face of an off-site grand tree. Root pruning shall be completed by an ISA certified arborist the pool deck can be on grade to the easement line. If the pool is currently um, at a distance requested that they provide a dimensional line. And this is um, showing in greater detail that pool and the setbacks as they um, are proposed. And this exactly is what this, the variance request is for.
the applicant has provided um, renderings showing um, what that proposed pool will look like. Um, and pictures of the property, I believe that this is showing that easement. In the determination of the variance request before the board tonight, the board members shall consider section 27-80 that lists the criteria for the approval of a variance request. If you have any questions, staff is available on hand. Quick question, all right, mm -hmm. help me orient. Um, sure. If this wasn't a corner lot, what is the setback for a pool? Five and five. Five and five, so shifted over one lot away from the corner, five and five. Correct. Gotcha, thank you. Welcome back. Hi again. State your name, your hardship, and say the magic words that you've been sworn, and then Zach Lapiz with Ultra Custom Group, address at 5401 Southdale Mabry. Yes, I've been sworn in. Awesome. Fire away. Okay. I want to try again here. Okay, this is on a ongoing construction project. So this pool, this pool had been permitted essentially and upon, so this had been permitted and all of the issues brought up by natural resources, et cetera, have been addressed in the act of permit that's on this job. Now, the issue that we're running into here comes down to both inaccuracies in the site survey that was provided by the homeowner um, in basically an impossibility of to maintain 15 foot well not an impossibility but the dwelling itself does not maintain 15 foot from the side what happens here in this particular situation is while the front corner maintains its 15 2 as it proceeds to the rear of the property line it starts to pinch against the property line and really works out to be more like 14 foot here now this pool is slated to get a screen enclosure because it requires one because of the utility, both the utility line and easement that's in the rear of this property. Along here on the north side of the property line, there is a, um, a power line that is uh, basically within a plumb drop of uh, 10 foot from water's edge of this proposed swimming pool. So um, ultimately when investigating this and kind of going through the survey and laying out this pool, this pool wound up being approximately two and a half foot at the size proposed two and a half foot outside of the corner of this house or two and a half foot into this 15 foot side setback. And it's really not the product of a change in the, in the pool itself, but a product in the accuracy of some of the measurements associated onto this survey. So, now, in a particular, in this particular project, it, we are so tight already and so constrained to the existing house and the existing dwelling and whatnot with this little design that in order to shrink the swimming pool and maintain in line with this would ultimately, you know, you know, and keep all the kind of the aspects that make a small plunge pool like this nice, you know, you're, it, it, it winds up with a pretty substantial reduction in the size of the swimming pool because the two and a half foot comes from here and essentially slides everything into itself, making you know adjacent seating areas and water features and stuff like that constraint. So when brought up to the homeowner um, that this was a potential avenue that we could pursue and be granted this additional two and a half feet to keep the pool the length that we had originally decided on um, they, they said, let's go for it. I said, it might be a while. They said, well, let's go for it. So here we are. And again, and as been pointed out before, typical side and rear setbacks are five and five on both these screen enclosures. Um, just, just the neighboring property here just in has five and five. There's several other properties along West Shore that have been able to build within Five foot of the five foot of the property line. It just comes down to being on a corner lot, 
Jane, one of the reasons I took that photo and sent that last photo was if there was any question as to the distance or the, the distance between West Shore, that culvert, and the, the CMU wall, you know, that uh, exists along the property line, the concrete wall, if there was any fear that it was in, that if this was, you know, this separation was used as a means to keep people distanced from, you know, high traffic streets, you can see that there is, you know, 29, or, you know, 29 foot from the roadway, plus a concrete wall, plus the 15 being reduced to 10 and a concrete, you know, screen, or, along with a screen enclosure as sufficient barrier to protect any like oncoming traffic is as good as I've seen now. Solutions that could have made this pool bigger if not for this grand tree here and of course that power line. Um, of course the power line itself, it's really its location on the property line that makes it distance. If it was right on the actual property line, then sure I might be able to push out the screen enclosure and gain some space inside of this area. But Ultimately, these folks just want to have a very small, quaint, but designer living space with a lot of these aspects, be able to walk around their swimming pool, and be able to you know, walk around and clean their swimming pool, and that's what really was the catalyst to having this meeting. So, Does that conclude your presentation? It does. All right. Um, I'll open it up. Is there any, uh, anyone in the audience who wishes to speak about this petition? Seeing none, uh, I'll open it up for board questions. I just want to make a comment. I think it's really cool that your trees sway in your graphic. I was gonna, I was gonna uh, snarkily say that uh, I was a little disappointed that the pool doesn't ripple, but when you zoomed in, it totally does. Uh, well, if I, let so me take I you to a presentation, Brett, and I will, you will see the water ripple. I don't turn know what the else sound to say about off it. For, All right. Does I'm anyone, never... anyone on the board, have any questions for the petition? No. All right. Seeing none, you have five minutes for rebuttal if you want to show us how you can make it splash, I guess. I don't know. All right. <laughs> it's done. Well, let me just... No, I, I've got nothing really okay. further to right. say um, other than, yes, this program has the ability to do that, but I don't know. I've, I've gotten us this far, yeah. so I don't want to rock the boat. Cool. You know? <laughs> Okay, uh, well then with that, um, I will close the public hearing and open it up for a motion from the board. Can I make a motion? All right. I move that the variance request for case VRB 22-49 for property located at 4713 West Neptune Street be granted as depicted on the site plan presented at the public hearing for a reduction of the corner yard setback from 15 feet to 10.3 feet. Um, based on the applicant presenting competent and substantial evidence in the record and at this public hearing of an unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty when considering the five hardship criteria set forth in section 27-80 of the city code, um, specifically that uh, this is a corner lot and but for the fact that it were a corner lot, um, this pool would easily meet the setback requirements. Um, additionally, the um, um, this won't interfere with the safe with the health safety or welfare there's a concrete wall that um, blocks you know the major road that's adjacent to the property and that makes it feel less like a corner lot all right uh, we have a motion is there a second second uh, motion and a second uh, all those in favor say aye all those opposed all right approved for nothing have a great evening for real this time likewise thank you thanks All right, last case, Ms. John, Ms. Madhu. Yes, this is the very last one. The next case before the board is VRB 2254. This is addressed at 5415 North Paddock Avenue. The property owner is Roberto Lanis. This is zoned RS50, residential single family. And the variance request before the board tonight is to reduce the side yard setback from three feet to zero and the E to E separation from five feet to three 
feet. This is for an existing accessory structure. And the code section in reference is section 27-156 that has the schedule of um, area, height, bulk, and placement for the RS50 zoning district as 20 feet for the front, 20 feet for the rear, seven for the corner, and seven for the side. And a minimum of five foot separation between principal and accessory structures measured E to E. This is the subject property. It is a corner lot in the USF Institutional Planning District at the intersection of West Comanche Avenue and North Paddock Avenue. And it's depicted in that aerial. This was a work without permits. Um, they have an active building permit for the carport and uh, code um, and complaint permits, um, um, well not permits, um, cases that are open um, for that large metal carport. Uh, this is a site plan that the applicant has provided. Um, and this is the carport in question right here. So uh, for this, it was reviewed by natural resources and found um, inconsistent. It was reviewed by transportation and found consistent. It was reviewed by right of way and found consistent with conditions. Um, and for comments, right of way has comments that the footers and eaves must be confined to the owner's lot. And for natural resources, uh, the property needs to meet the green space requirement. Um, the rear yard looks to, seems paved and they need to provide calculations for the green space or how they'll be meeting that 25% um, if they haven't met it. Um, this is uh, what would be the structural um, drawings for that carport that the applicant has provided. And this is a picture showing the carport as it currently exists. And this is for parking recreational vehicle. So you have a picture on the left with the um, carport empty and you have a picture on the right with the recreational vehicle. I think it's an RV packed in the metal carport. And here um, dimensions that the applicant has provided, provided showing um, what the setbacks currently exist as. Um, staff has received no letters of support or objection to this variance request. And um, if um, in the determination of this variance request, um, the board shall consider section 27-80 as the criteria for approving a variance request. And if you have any questions, um, I am available in hand to answer as needed. And this is uh, this applicant will be requiring the services of an interpreter. Buenas noches. Mi nombre es Roberto Llanes. Good evening. My name is Roberto Llanes. Eh, soy dueño de la propiedad cita en el 5415 North Park Avenue, Tampa, Florida 33614. Um, I am the owner of the property <coughs> located at 5415 North Paddock Avenue, Tampa, Florida, 33614. Vivo en esta propiedad aproximadamente por casi 20 años junto con mi esposa y mis hijos. I have lived in this property for about 20 years along with my wife and my children. Eh, el motivo de yo estar aquí hoy es para ver uh, si... So oh. Two things. Sí. Um, yes, you've been sworn. Yeah. Okay. Sí. And then um, it has been pointed out that you were not here for the explanation that we gave about the uh, ability to obtain a continuance if you so choose. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that you were aware that because we only have four members this evening, you have the ability to choose a continuance, but you must do so before you make your presentation, if you so choose. And I was just about to get to that, I'm letting her give it that 
esto que usted está peticionando, entonces usted tiene que hacer la pregunta and también sembrante. As you consider that, a reminder that you need a unanimous, you need all four votes in order to get an approval this evening. Hi, my name is Johnny Dominguez. I'm Roberto Janet's wife. I, I live in 5415 North Para Avenue. I have first wife. Okay, awesome. And the, the point is, uh, I would like to take the advantage of that, but the point is that we are ready and being charged $150 per date. And, and that could be more difficult. Well, those, those fines are stayed while you are in the process of the variance. Mm -hmm. So if you, are, if you are continued for a month, you will not be fined for the time frame in which you are already in the process. So that, that is that correct, Ms. Jones-Velez? Jones-Velez Legal Department, I'm not familiar with their actual case. Oh. But even if the fines are running, they do have the opportunity to request a fine reduction once their property is brought into compliance. So okay, but but now that they're in the variance process, though, my understanding is once they're in the variance process, there's an automatic, and I would have to I would have to check that. I couldn't say for sure. Okay. What this evening is. But but they do have the opportunity to request a fine reduction. Okay. No, 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 um, I think that I would like to present my case tonight, and I think that you will find my request reasonable. Okay. All right. You're welcome to proceed then. Um, Go ahead. You have 10 minutes to make your presentation and explain your hardships to us. Okay. La primera circunstancia extraordinaria que yo tengo para este caso es. First, may I pass? I just asked him to go slow. The first is the case is the first item regarding the hardships. Es que mi propiedad es muy ancha, la casa como tal es muy ancha y no tengo los. The property is very wide. Y no tengo los espacios suficientes hacia los lados. And I don't have enough space on the sides. Eh, yo traté de hacer lo mínimo, eh, lo mínimo posible del ancho de donde me cabe el RV. Eh, exactamente tengo solamente dos pulgadas. Si usted puede ver la foto, tengo dos pulgadas eh, solamente para yo poder entrar en el RV de, que me da con los espejos. So, to be able to um, have access for the RV to enter the property, if you see in the pictures, and including the mirrors on the outside, there is only two inches on each side. Eh, el motivo de yo querer eh, proteger el RV es porque yo tenía uno hace algún tiempo un poco. I want to protect the RV, and in the past I used to have another RV. Y, y este RV a mí se me dañó el techo porque producto del sol eh, se me... The RV was damaged due to the sun tenía damage. Que, tenía que pro, eh, proteger, eh, ponerle un cope, eh, every un protector, two, un protector every two, o, cada dos o tres meses. I had to eh, use some sort of sun protector every two or three months. Y entonces ese, ese, ese producto era bien, bien caro, se me that encarecía mucho. was very expensive. Entonces, al yo comprar este RV un poco más moderno, eh, decidí hacer esto. RV that is a little bit more modern, I decided to do this. Eh, eh, yo hablé con el vecino antes de hacer nada y él me dijo que con él no I había ningún problema. I spoke with the neighbor before I did this and he didn't have any, any issues with this. Eh, por ser esto una estructura desmontable, no pensé que hubiese ningún problema a la hora de yo acercarme un poco más a la propiedad de él y no, y no dejar... Aparte que no sabía que había dejar un espacio específico por I ser una propiedad know that there was, I had to leave a certain space between the two um, property lines, but also the... Um, um, ¿Usted está hablando del carport? The carport. I wanted to clarify that he was talking about the carport. 
so that the carport is something that it can be brought down. Eh, esta estructura yo decidí hacerla después que el vecino hizo la cerca, que habló conmigo para hacer la cerca y le hicimos entre los dos. I decided to uh, uh, build it because the uh, neighbor also spoke about doing the fence along the line. Traté de dejar un pequeño espacio entre la cerca de él para... And para I tried to leave a space between his fence and my Y por area. eso fue que me quedó mucho más pequeño de lo que yo hubiera querido. Créanme que... That's why it, it, it ended up being a smaller area than what I originally had wished to do. Eh, y lo hice lo más atrás posible para que esto no afectara a la visibilidad de la calle. And I also put it as far back as I could so that it would not affect the visibility from the street. Eh, eso es todo mi, mi razón por la que yo quiero. Yo These are all my reasons why I am addressing you tonight. Ya, quiero apelar a la, a la conciencia de ustedes a ver si, si me lo permiten, eh, me, ya que este arbi eh, es RV, bien es, es algo costoso y, y si se me echa a perder me va a pasar lo mismo que el anterior. And I don't want this RV to uh, be damaged just like the other one in the past. No sé si quieres agregar we, algo. We understand that uh, the code and the regulations now we understand that now that is that amount of food from one side or the back. We clearly understand that. But the point is that because it's the metal structure that we now find out is that we invest in that metal structure, a lot of money. So we thought that is no a requirement for, like he said, for like a certain fit. And like he said, uh, we are, uh, I spoke, we are the oldest neighbor in, in that area. And we spoke even with a neighbor across the street that is nothing related with, uh, with, the, uh, with the metal porch. And we spoke with the directive per person next to us and the back. And uh, they already wrote letter, each of them, to provide you guys. I have a copy of those that that doesn't affect them at all. And they agree before that we install that. I mean, they said that's no problem. I mean, it's nothing that affects them. And at the same time, we noticed, and they noticed, since we installed that, it was a lot of uh, 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 condition of the weather, winds, uh, uh, haze, and a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, rain, heavy rain, and it doesn't affect at all. Uh, uh, to the neighbor, neither to the back neighbor. And of course, it doesn't affect neither to the visions or the uh, 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 assistance or the ambience for the neighbor or the area. And, you know, it's, I understand that RV is a condition like a luxury, but in our case, we bought it because our daughter used to be a city of Tampa recreation uh, gymnastic athlete. She, she always traveled to outside of the, of the state, bringing a lot of metal to the city of Tampa <laughs> yeah, as a gymnastic. So we spent a lot of money at the beginning paying hotels. So that's where we bought the RV. It's not, to be honest with you, at this point, we almost don't use it. I mean, we, we will like in the future sell it, but we are still paying for it. And that is a, like a protection that it costs a lot to cover the, and maintain the roof of the, of the RV. And we want to do a lower as well, but it's impossible for the dimension of the RV. We noticed that a lot of neighbors, we have also pictures uh, around that have a kind, a kind of same metal porch in the kind saying a certain distance to us. And we spoke with them and they said that's no problem at all and nobody bothered him. I mean, for that reason, say, I mean, like uh, try to understand our position. Hey. Yo tengo aquí la, la, las cartas yeah, de los I vecinos. Have here no sé si ellos from the neighbors. Con ella. And I would like to, if you like to see the letters. Yes, that would be wonderful. So anything that needs to, uh, that you'd like us to see, to needs to be submitted to city staff and then they'll bring it over to us and we'll take a look at it. They'll need to keep it for the record. Okay. Uh, similarly, you mentioned that you had pictures of other carports mm -hmm. in the neighborhood, that would also be helpful uh, okay. to include. So, but I don't know if that would be late at this point. Um, to submit at this point, no, no, no. it would be you late. Can, if you can show it, you can include it, uh, okay. absolutely, please. Okay. If you have yeah, a I have a, I have on my phone, actually. Yeah. I, can, I can email you guys. Okay, I mean, yeah, that, that works, right? If, if, 
Anything you show us needs to be submitted to city of staff course, so it's included in the record. Like yeah, and yeah, that, and that's what I assume. We're Do you want see. me to send it right away? You can put your phone. You can put oh, okay. Your right, so you can share the photos um, by doing it that way. Yeah. Yep. The guy before had the computer there, right? right. Same thing. Just. Okay, this is one of the neighbor uh, name. It's exactly the same as ours. Wow. Yeah. This one is bigger than ours. Okay. I don't know. Could you see it now? Yeah. Yeah. Which, where, um, relatively, is that just like right across the street this from you? This one is across to my property. Oh, yeah. So like diagonally across? Well, I don't know this one because honestly, I, we took a picture. We were driving by and we took a picture of different. We don't go the, the address exactly. Okay. But, but within It's a like few a two, two miles around, two miles of our property. Okay. Like a four or five blocks okay. around. This one is the same and different point of view. Okay, so. Okay. Yeah, we want to send to her, right? Okay. That's helpful. Thank you. Um, is there anything else that you would like to include in your presentation? He he wants to show you also a picture what we we need to uh, when when we park the RV we have to be sure because the the distance between the mirror the mirror the side mirror is almost rising I mean uh, 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 right there to the motor porch. I mean, to be honest, we try our best to put it as high as possible. Sinceramente, quisiera recalcar esto. Yo lo hice lo más. Después lo hice. I I try to do it. Lo lo hice lo más pequeño posible y. I use it. I. Sinceramente. Did it as small as I could. Yeah. Prácticamente, para que tengan una idea, yo para parquear ese RV ahí me tomo más de 20 minutos con dos personas porque es really, really, bien, bien apretado. Because it's very tight space. Eh, eso es todo lo que yo quería plantear. Eh, nuevamente le doy las gracias por su atención. Y... And of course, we are naked at the presentation compared to the guy prior us. <laughs> But I mean, it's our course. Pienso que el el vecino que es el más afectado, el el los vecinos pusieron su número de teléfono. The neighbors also put the phone numbers on the. En cada carta, por si por si quieren hacer alguna pregunta y. In case you want to make a phone call to them. Oh, we can't do that, but thank you. El vecino dice que con el problema. They want to cooperate. The neighbors say that they don't have a problem with this. Él le explica en la carta si si ven aquí yo le puse también una un una canal para para recoger el agua. I also put a you call this channel de water. The gutter for the water. Y y él pone en la carta que cada vez que llueve nunca ha visto problemas de agua ni nada porque yo tomé. He also puts in the letter, writes in the letter that every time it rains he doesn't see water issues around it. And also, he he told us all the time that he never used that area because he only used the uh, south side of his property. I mean, that area that is near to us, he never used it. I mean, neither to park any bike. 
Eso es todo, yo traté de tomar la mayor medida de precauciones posible para poder That's all, eh, I edificar esto. Mayor precautions in this issue. Muchas gracias por su atención. Thank you so much for your attention. Okay, thank you. If that concludes your presentation, uh, I'll ask if there's anyone in the audience who wants to speak about this petition, but since it's only staff back there, I'm going to say that's probably a no. Um, so I will open it up for any questions from the board. Does the board have any questions? Yes, sir. Just one around the north side of the house where I see a concrete and another covered area. Um, it looks like it's got plenty of space to hold an RV and possibly this carport and you would have no setback issues. Uh, what's, what's up there? Is there a possibility to park the RV on the other side? <coughs> Look at the front of the house, the north side. On the left side of the house. Yep. Sí. Uh -huh. ahí, yes. ahí yo tengo un garaje edificado en la parte de atrás y el, el RV tiene 32 pies de largo y no me da. Ahí solamente tengo 28 pies. And it only gives me 28 feet of clearance. And there are these 32. Créame que lo pensé en ese lugar. Believe me that I thought about that. Eh, lo pensé hacer en ese lugar, pero también aparte I que tenía ese problema side, del, the, del largo, eh, pensé que, length, que como se iba a ver desde la calle, porque eso es una casa que hace esquina, well. se, iba a ver, se iba a ver más, más feo, no sé, no, no se iba a ver bien. Ugly, So you're saying that there's another carport on the other side that's holding cars? Exactly. No. Está diciendo que hay un carport en el otro lado. No, en el otro lado, en el otro lado hay una estructura, un building. It's a building. Oh, it's connected. Okay, so that's, yeah. that's connected to the two-story building. Yeah. No, 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 no. Está diciendo dos cosas, no. Está diciendo que el el eh, que tú no puedes echar el B para atrás porque está el edificio sí. de, de estructura. Eso no tiene nada que ver con ningún campo. Ya ahí no hay ningún campo ni hay nada, no, es lo que está explicando. Sí, hay un campo pequeño, pero, pero, pero igual no me da, aunque quite el campo. Pero no está me preguntando da que si está pegado a la estructura. ¿Es qué? El, el campo que está con el edificio. Sí, está pegado la, al edificio. Acá. Pero que no te da, lo que tiene que especificar Ajá. es que no te da. Uh, ok, you, you can. Ok. Sí. <laughs> okay. Um, el, el, ahí, ahí tengo la estructura de concreto, de building. There is a concrete structure of the building, okay. right there. Uh -huh. Entonces, de, de donde so termina esa estructura. So there's a two-story concrete building, and then it's got a one-story garage that's tied to it. Sí. Sí. Okay. Sí. There's a lot of stuff going on on that property. All right. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, Miss Johnson. Um, I have a discussion item for you. Um, the only thing that worries me about this granting the zero foot eave to eave on the, uh, sorry, the side yard staff back at zero feet um, is that this stays with your property for an existing accessory structure. So I'm wondering if you would be open and if I'm allowed to do this is to say that it will never be enclosed as a condition. Yeah. So then, Oh, yeah. Just to talk about it. So if, if we say that we approve a site plan and calls it a carport. Well, it's, it's for an existing accessory structure, but we say it can't to put a condition. It's better to put a condition. I just don't get a lot of talk of site plans. You're, you're, you're absolutely right that when you call something a carport, it makes sense, but it's better to put the condition in there so that it's obvious. Because when um, 20 years from now, when staff is reviewing it, there. Would you be open Great. to that condition? Instead of standing on this post, but how 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 the the how that could be closer? How I mean, if you leave your house and new owners come in, this uh, reduction in side yard it stays with the property. We don't know what'll happen in the future, so we would like um, if we grant this reduction of side side yard setbacks and eaves separation, we just want to add a condition that it can't be enclosed. Because if someone else moves in, 
you know, we just want to keep the character as you have it right now. Uh, sometimes. So you are not asking us to enclose it. No, 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 just no. the opposite. Oh, I, I understand oh. the opposite. opposite. No, because for us, it would be, it's it not worth sense. it. It's, it's not I, worth it. Right. Absolutely. And in understand. the future, in case that we want to move, I don't think so because we are 21 years living in there. In case that we want to move, we want to take the whole structure because that costs us a lot. I mean, if this does the case. See. So yes. you're okay yeah. with that? Yes. Definitely. <laughs> Great. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. Yeah. 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 Definitely. And that is better for the RV as well. Yes. Yo no quiero cerrarlo. Yes, yeah. I don't want to close it. Yes, okay. Great, thank you. Y ella dijo que me vaya, me lo llevo, es mío. Esa es la casita de la big. I say that. I, ya lo dije. The day that I am leaving, I'm taking it. That's the house for the RV. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions? All right, seeing none, no. you have uh, an additional five minutes for any rebuttal or anything else you want to add. I just want to add that thank you very much for letting us present this at uh, this time that everybody is tired. <laughs> I want to go home, so thank you for your time, basically. Okay, uh, then with that, I will close the public hearing and open it up for a motion from the board. Yeah. Getting tired, I can do this. <laughs> I move that the variance request for case VRB 2254, located at 5415 North Paddock Avenue, uh, as depicted on the site plan presented at the public hearing, for a reduction of side yard setback, setback from three foot to zero foot, and eave to eave separation from five foot to three foot for an existing accessory structure, with the following conditions that the existing accessory structure may never be enclosed. That said variance as conditioned be granted based upon the applicant presenting competent and substantial evidence in the record and at this public hearing of an unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty when considering the five hardship criteria set forth in section 2780 of the city code, specifically that the existing footprint of the house and an existing building um, limits the use of the side, uh, side setbacks on the property. Also, this uh, in, uh, carport enclosure um, is consistent with the neighborhood character, and there have been no objections by the immediate neighbors. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. All right, a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed? Motion passes four to nothing. Thank you, Have a great evening. Thank, Thank, you, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Uh, any What's other up? business? Thank you. We're done. Thank you. 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 Thank